opening today to get about 40 new members for the Husker football team. I hope everybody's having a great day today. Welcome Husker Nation to our coverage brought to you by Woodhouse. Greg Sharp along with Jessica Cootie. What a fun time this is going to be in the next couple of hours. Yeah, it really is. And just, you know, hearing this coaching staff talk about some of these guys that they're going to be bringing in today. It's an important group, right? It's the first class that they've recruited from start to finish. They came here really as things were, this was ramping up a year ago. Mm -hmm. if, if we go back to a year ago, we were having this signing day. And so, you know, th this is the first class that they spent a year really diving into and bringing in. And as these num as these names roll in, you know, the things that we heard a year ago talking about the kind of recruits that they want to target, protecting the home state. They're going to see a lot of kids that are from the state of Nebraska opening up the pipeline to Texas. Guys that get the opportunities from going to camps, the legacies, all those things that we heard last year when they were talking about building their signing classes, you're going to see in this class as they roll in today. This staff also worked up until the 11th hour because there's some additions to this staff that weren't really on the script maybe two weeks ago that have been added. And that's kind of the way this works is that you kind of build this as you go. But uh, we're going to get to some fun stuff in the next couple of hours, including Coach Rule will be here later on to kind of talk as we get more of the names in. But we're just past the 7 o'clock hour, so the East Coast Times could start sending their national letters in an hour ago. Those in the Central Time Zone, and that's going to be a bulk of this class, can now start sending their letters of intent in. So it's a little bit slow to begin, but we're going to come firing out of the gate with a big time name because we can now announce that Dylan Riola, the number one rated quarterback in the country, is going to be a Cornhusker. He is the son of Dominic Riola, a tri terrific offensive lineman, great center for the Cornhuskers uh, a couple of decades ago. Dylan is out of Buford uh, High School down in Buford, Georgia, uh, unbelievable school for high school football down there and Jessica big fella 6'3", 220 is his, are his particulars but boy is his tape fun to look at and some of the numbers he put up were eye popping they really were and you know you, you talk you break down the touchdown to interception numbers and just jaw dropping but you know you and I talked a lot about the storyline leading up to today and you know it's a long process a long journey and I just feel like his heart is here and he alluded to that and we're going to hear from Dylan coming up in a few minutes and you can just tell just how much this program means to him what it means to him to wear that in 88 career touchdowns in high school to 11 interceptions he threw for 8500 yards these are fantasy football type numbers that Dylan put up and again he it was at Chandler High School down in the Phoenix area and then finished up at at Buford High School in Buford Georgia which again it's a powerhouse area for high school football uh, just a tremendous get for Nebraska. One of those guys that I alluded to earlier that made a different decision in the last several days of this. He was actually here on campus last weekend. Got a chance to go to a Husker wrestling match and also a chance to go see some women's basketball on Sunday. He's been to a lot of different Husker events yeah. and the numerous times that he's been on campus. It was funny. I was, I was chatting with him before we, we did our interview and he was talking about how much he enjoyed going to the wrestling. He had never been to a wrestling match in person. He's like, boy, that was really fun and they're really good. I was like, yeah, they are they're really good that wrestling program is fun to watch but you know just the, the the support that he's gotten every event that he's gone to I think means a lot to him too but uh, Marcus Satterfield you got a chance to, to chat with him and and what the Huskers are getting out of Dylan Riola moving forward Dylan Riola the newest corn Husker six foot three played his senior year at Buford High School down in the Atlanta area he's the newest corn Husker Joined by Husker offensive coordinator Marcus Satterfield. Nebraska has another quarterback to add to this class, and this is a big fish, Dylan Riola, a legacy player. His dad obviously was a terrific center for the Cornhuskers. This, uh, this one I'm sure you're smiling about to get Dylan to come to be a Nebraska Cornhusker. Yeah, I mean, that was it was huge. When, once we started having some communication with them, uh, that there was some interest, you know, from their side of, of possibly, uh, you know, enrolling and, and coming and playing football here. I think it, it says a lot about just the – the program in which Nebraska is. I think that, you know, the family ties are one thing. Uh, the belief in our coaching staff, that's awesome that they believe in what we're doing. That's another thing, but I think just the the pride of coming and playing somewhere, you know, where his father played and just he knows, you know, he'll tell you like it feels like family here. It feels like home here. So for him to, to uh, come to us after being committed to another place for a couple of months was huge for us, huge news. 
How about his arm strength, his accuracy, those type of things that you see? It's, I mean, it's, it, it is, he's the number one quarterback in the country for a reason. I mean, he's got elite size, he's got elite arm talent, he's got, you know, very good arm strength, very good accuracy. Uh, create. So there's Coach Satterfield talking about a guy that he's going to be working very closely with in the coming months, and you can tell, pretty excited about it, adding Dylan to this class. Jessica had a chance to catch up with Dylan Riola, the terrific quarterback that's now a Cornhusker. Well, we welcome in the quarterback, Dylan Riola. It's been a crazy long journey and process for you. Congratulations, you're officially a Husker. Take me through the process and, and your decision and how you ended up back with the Huskers over the weekend. Yeah, thank you for having me on the show. Um, you know, first, you know, Nebraska, I always believed it was in my blood. It was in my heart. Um, for a long time and um, you know I just felt that I could be a part of something special that'd be bigger than myself and um, you know Lincoln Nebraska is a, a great place and the University of Nebraska is is a special place to um, you know have a, have a college experience and you know play sports with you know some of the best fans. How has it been getting to know Coach Rule and this coaching staff? What did you see and like out of what the direction that they had in place there in their first season? I love what I, what I have seen so far. Um, I think the thing that separates Coach Rule from a lot of people um, is just the way he connects with his players. Um, and I think that's huge to, you know, for a team like Nebraska, you connect with your players. You, you can really have a bigger purpose for playing. Um, on the football field and just, all right, I want to go play football. You know, you, you look left, you look right, you want to play for those guys. And I think that's what Coach Will does a great job of, of establishing and, and you know, uh, having his guys ready to play on, on Saturday night. Love that. Well, you've made several trips to Lincoln. You've been to multiple sporting events. You had the crowd chanting your name. You've taken pictures with babies. And I'm sure your, your social media has just been blown up. Uh, what does it mean to you have to, the, to have the kind of – Reaction and reception from Husker Nation. I think it just goes to show how much, you know, they know their sports, you know, not just their football, um, but they know all their sports. They know their volleyball. They know basketball, women's basketball, softball. I just think it shows that, you know, you have you have a great fan base that, you know, you, you look forward to, to playing for. Um, and and just they're, they're going to be there and support you through the ups and downs and, and you know, you you've seen that since you know since Nebraska has came up on the map, you know they sell out Memorial Stadium every single game, and I think and that, that speaks to you know the kind of fans and you know they have they have a they have a you know a lot of fun coming to the Nebraska events. In this 2024 signing class, there are a number of legacies whose dads played for this program. What does ne Nebraska the N? What does it mean to you? Yeah, I think it, it means, you know, a lot more than just football. I think it's nationwide, um, and I think it's special that you get to, you know, wear that, that N on your helmet with the red stripe down the middle and know that you're representing something, you know, more than just that team that year, but all the people that came before you and laid that foundation, you know, with Coach Osborne, Coach Solich, you know, and all those coaches that came up through to help, you know, keep Nebraska and, and leave Nebraska where it's at right now. You come from a very tight knit family, of course. Uh, you know your relationship with with Donovan, who's on staff here, is, has been reported on how close you guys are. Uh, how excited are you to get to be on the same team as him, to get to work with him and his offensive line? That hey, boy, they made lots of improvements. A lot of those guys are coming back. How exciting is that for you? I think it's super exciting. You know, family is huge in in my culture. You know, the Hawaiian Polynesian culture, I think, is huge. So I think to have him on the staff is awesome. But, you know, to the O-line's credit, I think it's, that's a special relationship that not a lot of people understand. You know, the, the O-line, they get they don't get a lot of credit, and they get the most hate. So, I, you know, I think it's they need to make sure that they're loved up the most and, you know, that that they're valued and, you know, that, that I make sure I take care of them. Oh, that's awesome. So how did you get into playing quarterback? Why quarterback? And, and what went into you becoming the nation's best quarterback? I think it was, it's, it's not just what, I, what I've done. You know, it's the sacrifices my parents have made to, to get me to training. Um, 
And I think quarterback's a unique position. You know, I'm very strong in my faith, and I and I believe, you know, strongly that, that God's put me in this position to, you know, spread his word and then spread his kingdom throughout, um, you know, the whole world. So I, I think that's a, that's a special platform that I have. But, you know, I think it, it's bigger than – it's bigger than just, you know, being the nation's top quarterback. I think it's the relationships you, you build along the way and, and how you, you know, you can meet so many cool people that, you know, hey, you don't you might not think you're going to meet up with them, but, you know, you end up doing that. So I think football is a great game. It, it always comes full circle, and, and it's a great opportunity. You know, it's the ultimate team game. I love that. Great, great answer there. So, you know, there's a lot of expectations that come along with having a dad that was – the kind of football player that your dad was, but then also to go along with that, you're the top quarterback in the nation. How do you manage those expectations? I guess, you know, there might be some young, young recruits that are listening. What would be your advice on, on how to manage those expectations? I think you try not to pay attention to those expectations because I believe, you know, from my growing up, you know, you pay attention to expectations. You're going to miss, you're going to miss all those steps and all those memories and, and all of those those moments that, that you cherish, you know, with your teammates if you're focused on that on that end goal rather than focusing on every step of that journey and understanding, you know, you, you have a lot of people that, that are pulling for you and you have a lot of people that aren't. So filtering that out and really just and just trusting your family that they have their best interests in mind for you. Um, and I think, you know, I think the biggest thing on that one is that you have to, you have to just enjoy the journey. You know, you, you look too far ahead, you'll get lost in the mix. If you if you if you're not staying up to, you know, what you need to, you'll get lost as well. So I think you just got to stay the journey. Trust trust the people that you trust, and, and trust the coaching staff. Great perspective. Well, we saw a lot of young wide receivers making plays for this offense last season. A lot of those guys coming back. How excited are you about some of the weapons you're going to get to throw the ball around to? I think it's be a lot of fun. You know. These guys work hard. They they made a lot of plays. They played a lot of football last year. Um, I think I'm just most excited to, to get in there and and go to work with them. I think that that's what makes football so great is you get to go to work with your guys um, day in and day out, um, earn their respect that way, um, and you know that that they're gonna want to put a lot of work in, and so am I. So I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. There's a lot of weapons, um, and you know they're 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 ready to go. All right, just got a few fun questions for you to close this this interview out. Who was your favorite player or athlete any sport growing up? Um, growing up, I mean, I would say still say I'm growing up, so I really like Patrick Mahomes. You know, I try to model my game after him. Okay, favorite cereal? Fruity Pebbles, easy. <laughs> easy. <laughs> easy. You didn't even have to think about that one. Uh, favorite hobby outside of football? I I do love cutting hair. Cut my brother's hair, my dad's hair, a bunch of my teammates' hair, um, and really just hanging out with my family. You know, cutting hair is fun. Get to enjoy my my brother and my dad, um, and, and you know, hanging out with my family is a lot of fun. Oh, that's awesome! Oh, that's... All right, Spotify Wrapped. Who's your number one artist? Oh, my favorite artist, um, I would say, would be uh, Rod Wave or um, Luke Combs. Awesome. All right, last question. Rank these cookie flavors, all right? I got four for you. Four, fourth being the worst, uh, first being the best. Chocolate chip, peanut butter, oatmeal raisin, macadamia nut. Okay. Um, oatmeal raisins, easily fourth. I'm not a fan <laughs> of those. Chocolate I agree. Chip, I agree. I'll go one with chocolate chip. Macadamia nut, I'll go two. And peanut butter, three. Oh, Awesome. A lot of fun, great perspective. Appreciate your time and enjoy it. I know it's been a long journey for you, but uh, congratulations, and we can't wait to see you here on campus in Lincoln. Thank you so much for having me. Go Big Red. Greg, maybe you can do your hair. Yeah, wouldn't take you much time. <laughs> you know, but well, I, I go back to the comment that he made about his heart was here, and you and I talked a lot about that when the it started unfolding that he was maybe opening it back up, the door back up to come here to Nebraska. And he mentioned that and, and his heart being here. And I think just it was always there for him. And it, again, you can tell just how much it means to him to wear the end. You just watch 30 seconds of his tape and you can see why there's so much hoopla because he can make all the throws, great touch on the intermediate routes, deep balls, all of that. 
he possesses. It's going to be amazing to get him here. He's got to go win the job. Get that? We yeah. all get that. So, uh, but exciting. You talked about the weapons that he is going to inherit, guys that are already here. A new one has been added to the batch as we can now announce that Ja'Cory Barney is in for Husker football. This is one of what we hope is a lot from the Miami area today, a wide receiver from Palmetto High School, which is a good powerhouse football program in South Florida. Jacory is a versatile guy, he even played some quarterback for them, but he is a dynamic athlete that uh, I know this Husker staff is excited to get in the fold. Can run it, can, he's just an explosive guy. Again, you watch his tape, you see an explosive athlete jump off the tape. He had over 30 offers and some of the, the big names across college football, Miami, which is his hometown school, A&M, Arizona, Illinois, Michigan, Maryland, Minnesota, Tennessee. So, you know, a highly sought after recruit right here. And, and just the athleticism certainly jumps off the charts. It was funny, he tweeted out a picture. Coach Roll visited him back in December and he Coach Roll was throwing up the 305. Uh, and having some fun with it. So, uh, again, it, one of the things you're going to hear, kind of co the consistent messaging as you hear from these recruits throughout the day is is the relationships that they were able to build with Coach Rule and the, this staff and how much that really means to them. And certainly you got to think a Miami guy, he credits a lot to his mom and the confidence that he has, but she, his mom loved it when, when, he came, when she came here and they came here on the visit to Nebraska so that those relationships that the guys are building with the staff are a big reason why these parents feel okay with sending these guys kind of far from home. And you had a chance to chat with Garrett McGuire and what the Huskers are getting with Ja'Cory Barney Jr. Joined now by Husker wide receivers coach Garrett McGuire. Talk about a new one in the house for the Cornhuskers. Ja'Cory Barney, a guy from the state of Florida. How did we find Ja'Cory? And tell me about this young man. Oh, man, Ja'Cory kind of fell into our lap. You know, he's obviously a Miami guy, and we have some Miami ties uh, uh, on our staff. But you talk about a guy that just lights up a room right when he walks in. He's, he's got the biggest smile. Um, but then, you know, just talk about him athletically. He's uh, long, fast, great change of direction. Um, you know, has really, really good ball skills, unbelievable body control that, um, you know, allows him to make people miss in the open field. Um, probably my favorite part about this year for Ja'Cory was um, he actually got to play quarterback um, and he had some success. So, you know, that really is going to help us and help him. And uh, the way we teach, the way we teach our offense is kind of from a, a quarterback lens so he can kind of see the whole picture and allow him to play multiple spots for us. And, um, again, just a, a great, great person, comes from a strong family. Mom's very, very strong, strong person, um, but he's going to help us a lot. He, he is a, he's a special player. Sounds like a guy that will fit into your room pretty well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think, uh, you know, we, we've been able to get a few guys from, from Miami that will really, really help us and kind of start to build a bond between those guys as well. There's the newest Cornhusker, Ja'Cory Barney from the state of Florida. The first of what I hope is many from that area today. We're kind of on the edge of the seat on a couple of other ones that we're hoping to see drop in the next couple of hours from that part of Florida. Nebraska has a connection down to that area. Former high school coach that's on this staff that could be really big for the Big Red. So Ja'Cory Barney is in for Nebraska. We also have our first transfer portal addition to announce to everybody today. Bly Hill is going to transfer from FCS St. Francis to be a Cornhusker. Bly is a defensive back, 6'3", got good length. He had uh, 21 tackles this past year, six pass breakups, two picks, had uh, four pass breakups against Duquesne. So an FCS player, which Nebraska's had some good luck in the past. You think about Omar Brown came yeah. from the FCS level at Northern Iowa. You had Samori Toure, another guy that came yeah. from the FCS level. There's some good football there, and I think Nebraska feels like they got a pretty nice find here in Bly Hill. Yeah, and you know, just sometimes they, they just need a chance, right? Didn't get highly recruited out of high school, but go and, and take care of business at the FCS, and then, hey, doors open up for them. But uh, let's hear from Evan Cooper for the first time, defensive backs coach on Bly Hill. Rejoined by Nebraska defensive backs coach Evan Cooper. Another addition to the Nebraska defensive back room, Bly Hill from the state of Maryland. Another guy with some length at six foot three. Tell us about him. Yeah, you, you can't have enough guys that, that are long uh, and can move well. Uh, he's one of those guys. He played a lot of ball um, as a true freshman. Uh, 
again, he's one of those guys, developmental guys. The sky's the limit. Like you said, he's six three. He's over six three. He can run. He can flip his hips. Uh, he's got some college experience. Um, we're excited about him, and he'll, he'll come in mid-year and compete in spring ball, and let's see. So much of an advantage, isn't it, Coach, to get guys to be able to come mid-season, mid-year, take yeah. part in spring ball? Yeah, lo those guys is looking to play in the fall. It's a huge advantage coming in mid-year. Uh, it's a really good idea. Uh, they can come in and get, get used to the, the rigors of college football and classes and such. So I think it's a really good idea. So Bly Hill, the latest addition to the Nebraska defensive backfield. So a transfer portal addition for Nebraska. I don't think Nebraska is going to get real heavy deep into this to transfer portal. They'll add it here or there, but you know, it's not a, it's maybe a big a flow from that part of the recruiting game as we've seen in recent past. But if you can find somebody you think could really help you out, you jump on it. And I think they felt like that way with Bly. Yeah, and you know, this staff is big on development, right? And, and getting those guys out of high school that they really feel like they can grow and develop and hey, maybe move some positions around and see where they fit as we've seen them have such success at. But um, yeah, if, if there's a need and a, a great get, a Billy Kemp was another one of those. Absolutely. You know, certainly if you yeah. can find a guy in the portal that, that fits a need, that fits with, with the culture and, and what is needed for the team, uh, they're going to do it. But I, I think they like getting those high school kids that they can, can grow and develop and really mold into what fits best for the, the kid and, and the family, but also for this program. Let's bring it home. <laughs> yeah. We've been talking about young men from Georgia, Florida, Maryland. Let's bring it home. we got an in-stater to announce. Caleb Benning is in. He's now a Cornhusker, the outstanding multi-sport star at Omaha Westside. He is a warrior. He's one of the legacy guys in this class. Obviously, his dad, Damon, who works a lot with us, unfortunately. We, he has to put <laughs> up with us on a daily basis. But Caleb, part of that great Westside program that has won back-to-back -back state titles at the Class A level in Nebraska. The Warriors have been dominant. Boy, they were yeah. incredibly dominant this past fall with wins. But Caleb, also a really good basketball player, multi-sport star, and took his time in this process. Yeah, I had offers from Duke, Iowa, Iowa State, Kansas, but he wanted to make sure it was going to be the right spot for him. And certainly, again, another guy that Nebraska and this program means a lot to him because of what Damon was able to do here and how much this program means to him and growing up and, and just seeing how much you know, that, that brotherhood means as you, you move on throughout your life. But he did, he wanted to make sure it was gonna be the right fit for him outside of his feelings for this program and, and what his dad did here. He, and he wants to certainly make his own mark, but uh, no doubt another another guy in this class that uh, really means extra special. It, it really means a lot. It's extra special for him to, to be able to put on that end. And I got a chance to chat with Caleb Benning. No, we're going to talk to oh, a coach first. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, we got a lot going on. <laughs> let's, talk here, let's hear from defensive coordinator Tony White on there. what they're getting out of Caleb Benning. Joined now by Husker defensive coordinator Tony White. Let's talk about some guys in the secondary. You've had a lot of guys. Caleb Benning, young man from Omaha West Side, is now a corn Husker. Tell us what you like about Caleb. Yeah, Caleb, I tell you what, anytime you, you got a guy who's a multi-positional guy, um, you know, a guy who um, uh, plays special teams, a guy who is dynamic on offense and then goes over there on the defensive backfield, plays multiple, multiple spots, um, that, that gets you excited just because of the versatility he has, the things he did on the field. Um, also a multi-sport guy, basketball. I uh, got a chance to watch him practice and move out there as well. Um, really, really excited about what he brings to the to the defense, and you know, anytime anytime a guy plays his best ball his senior year, that really that really puts an onus on the development. You know, every year he's gotten better and better and better, and the last year of high school he was playing his best ball, so it was good to see. His dad obviously is Damon, who played at Nebraska and understands what Husker football is about. That's probably part of it too, isn't it? Yeah, legacy man, hometown hero, legacy. I mean, those guys, they just they just end up playing better ball. They just end up representing the university the right way. So, Very good. Caleb Benny, the newest addition to the Husker defensive backfield, the Omaha West Side star. His dad will take credit for what a great athlete he is, but his mom is also a soccer player in Nebraska. So I kind of lean more there, but I'm just giving DB a little trouble there. But great to have Caleb in, the first of a handful of locals that we're going to be talking about throughout the morning here. And Jessica had a chance to catch up with Caleb Benny. We welcome in our favorite Benning here on the Huskers Radio Network, Caleb Benning out of Westside. 
Caleb, obviously have to give a, a little bit of poke at your dad, a, a colleague of ours, but thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations. How does it feel? Signing day is finally here. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Um, it feels great. Um, the commitment process was a very long, uh, long process, and it uh, feels great to just fast forward all the way to signing day. You know, you're one of the, the top recruits in the state of Nebraska, and, and uh, a lot of hype surrounding you your entire high school career. So when you, you start getting recruited, what take me through the decision process of how you approached it and, and how you wanted to go through the recruiting process. Uh, really, I wanted to get a feel for everybody. Um, I think I'm, I'm above average at reading people. So uh, just getting around people and seeing how they act, how they treat me, um, hearing from other players, how the coaches are, how it is to be in the program, um, really just exploring and seeing what it would be like day to day in the program. You had a lot of people, I'm sure, in your ear, a lot of people probably hitting you up uh, about the process. You know, how did you handle it? How were you able to handle it and all the pressure and expectations that come along with it? Um, I would say just doing things my way. Um, obviously listening to the people around me, but um, really making sure that I feel good in making my own decisions and not just doing stuff because other people might want me to. Um, talking to my dad and my family a lot, uh, taking them on trips with me, just seeing their perspective because, um, I mean, I trust them. I've been with them my whole life. They know what's best for me. So just taking um, insight from people close to me and then also sticking to my own opinions and not focusing on the outside noise. That being so grounded, where does that come from? How are you able to, to remain so grounded throughout that? Uh, definitely my dad. Um, I see he's very busy all the time. A lot of people to talk to, a lot of people, uh, a lot of responsibility. Um, so just um, seeing him have a cool demeanor um, about 95% of the time he's doing life, um, I would say definitely rubbed out on me. So when you um, decide to... to choose Nebraska and again a long process thought out process you did your due diligence what was it about the Huskers coach role this staff that you felt like it was the fit for you besides you know just the the legacy part of it and being a Nebraska kid but I know you really wanted it to make sure that it was the right fit for you so why was it the right fit for you um, so I took a visit in January um, when Coach Rule got the job, and it was just kind of like an introduction, and I really liked the vibes he gave off. Um, he was very personable, easy to talk to. I could, I could see uh, a lot of his players just liking him, being closer to the head coach and trusting him. And then um, in the spring, um, I sat down with Coach Cooper, and we just we got on the same page. He explained to me that, I'm very wanted, and that was a big key because I don't want to go anywhere I'm not wanted. Um, college football is hard enough, so you'd rather be around people that enjoy having you around than not. And uh, really from there, they just made it known that they wanted me. And I'm reaching out a lot. Um, and then also seeing the vision with Coach Rule. Um, I know he's had a lot of success at the past places he's been at, and I can tell that this year um, – the record may not speak for it, but there is a lot of improvement um, that a lot of people don't see. So you played wide receiver and defensive back. You mentioned you played running back growing up, but how did you land on defensive back? What is it about that spot, that position that it you it fits you best, that you feel like it's the best spot for you? Um, I would say I'm naturally physical. Um, I've been... Uh, I used to play rough ever since I was three. So um, being physical on defense definitely helps a lot. But there's also a lot of opportunities to make plays. Um, coming downhill and tackling, uh, pass deflection, interception. Um, so just just being a – it allows me to be a, a playmaker um, every single play. Um, wide receiver, you may have to run block. Um, you may not get – you may run a good route and not get the ball. So just – uh, making plays every chance I can is really what I'm about. You know, that being said, how much has playing wide receiver helped you as a defensive back? Oh, a lot. Um, just understanding as a wide receiver what you want to do to the DB, and then 30 minutes later in practice, understanding what wide receivers want to do to you, it's almost like cheating. It helps you out a lot um, with body movements, habits that the wide receivers have, um, just like routes that – you'll run on a certain part of the field, routes you won't run on a certain part of the field. So helping wide receivers has helped me, or playing wide receivers has helped me a lot. Well, you, you mentioned the conversation that you had with Coach Cooper, but in terms of his coaching and developing guys and, and 
seeing him on the sideline and how he coaches guys. What about that is appealing to you? Uh, I would say he's all business. When it's time to work, it's time to work. And I'm I'm very much the same way. I like to get in when I'm supposed to get in. And just seeing um, the freedom he gives his guys to make plays, um, those guys uh, watching them on Saturdays, they love playing football. They love making plays. And that, that relates really closely to me. Um, and then just – Having my first real conversation with him be a sit down for about an hour and a half really lets me know uh, the type of person he is. And there's a lot of trust with him. You know, this coaching staff said from the start that they wanted to lock up the state of Nebraska and make sure that the best ta talent here in this state stays home. And if you look at the commitments from the state of Nebraska and, and the top talent and all the names that have the in next to them, yourself included, you've played a lot of these guys. You, you know them growing up. What does it mean to you personally that the state of Nebraska, the talent here, is so important to this staff? Uh, it means a lot. I'm um, seeing, seeing a lot of guys like uh, Xavier Watts go to different schools. Um, like I just feel like uh, it hasn't been prioritized in the past, and I know that there's a lot of great talent in Nebraska, um, even before me, that's got out of Nebraska. So I'm um, really putting Nebraska on the map for high school sports, having a little brother uh, getting ready for high school and just giving um, – because I know there's a lot of talent uh, traveling and playing basketball and sports. There's a lot of talent in Nebraska, but because it's Nebraska in the middle of the U.S., nobody really looks at it. So just having an opportunity to put uh, Nebraska on the map for younger people coming after me. There's a few guys in this class that have dads that played at Nebraska and, and even track and field as well. But for you personally, uh, how special is that to get to share that with your dad? I mean, you, you've talked about him a lot, but to get to, I know you want to create your own legacy, but to share in that, in the brotherhood that comes along with being a Nebraska football player, um, how special is that for you? Uh, it's very cool, very special. Um, you mentioned it, the brotherhood. I've got to meet some really cool people. Um, I'm pretty close to Johnny Rogers and Eric Crouch, so knowing that there's successful people like that in my corner, um, it means a lot. All right, um, what what goes into these next few months for you? Um, I know you got a, a basketball season that you got high hopes for, but to be able to come here and, and hit the ground running with with uh, everything that's expected here and come the summer. Uh, this, these next few months are very important. Um, as you mentioned basketball, I'm trying to win a state title, but as soon as that's over, um, I already talked to Nebraska. We're going to get some workouts, uh, going and, um, just like you said, hit the ground running in June and see what the freshman season holds for me. All right. I got some fun questions for you. Maybe I'll let Husker fans get to know you a little bit. Who is your favorite player or athlete, any sport growing up? Uh, Kobe Bryant. Kobe sure. Bryant. What did you like about Kobe? Uh, he was just a killer. Um, it didn't matter who was on his team. Um, Pau Gasol, he's had some bad teams, good teams. He was going to do what he does and try everything he does to uh, get have success. Awesome. Favorite hobby outside of football? Um, I'd probably say video games. Uh, I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of free time, so just uh, playing with my friends, having fun, Fortnite, 2K, uh, NCAA doesn't matter, just video games. All right, what's your favorite cereal? Ooh, fruity pebbles for sure. <laughs> nice, yeah. Spotify rap. I don't know if you're a Spotify guy, but who was your number one artist? Uh, it was Drake. Drake by, by a mile, yeah. <laughs> by a mile. Were you in the top percent percentile? Uh, not quite. There's a there's a couple more people that are bigger fans than me, but I was pretty close. That's awesome. Okay, this is going to be a fun one. Can't wait to see your answer on this one. Rank these cookie flavors. All right, I'm going to give you four flavors. Rank them from fourth being last, obviously one being best. Chocolate chip, <laughs> peanut butter, macadamia nut, oatmeal raisin. We'll see if you're your dad's kid on this one. Oatmeal raisin first. Not oh, even no. close. <laughs> and then I'd say peanut butter in second, chocolate chip in last, because I don't like chocolate and macadamia in third. All right. Well, I'm sure your dad would say the same thing. You are your, your father's kid on that one. We have a lot of debate on that here uh, in our broadcast. I am not oatmeal raisin. Greg, your dad, obviously big oatmeal raisin guys. So uh, fun, very fun interview. Thank you so much. Uh, great perspective and appreciate it. Congratulations again and best of luck in basketball season. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, so people are asking and wondering why I'm asking the question about the cookies because it's been an ongoing debate yes. between you, 
Damon, who's on uh, the, the call with us and myself and, and our producers. Now, I do not like oatmeal raisin. You and Damon are big oatmeal raisin we guys. Are. So obviously Caleb is his father's son, but uh, you know, just uh, got such a great head on his shoulders. Obviously he broke down his process and, and why he went through really taking his time and wanting to make sure. But um, I know Damon's excited and, and the staff's excited and Caleb's excited. So congratulations to the Bennings. It's always fun. How about him dropping Johnny Rogers, Eric Crouch's name in the uh -huh. interview? I mean, that's a Husker. He knows exactly yeah. that great history. And what's the deal with Fruity Pebbles? That's back to back <laughs> guys that say Fruity Pebbles. You're not a Fruity Pebbles guy? Nope, nope, nope. What's your, what are you like? I would probably be Frosted Flakes. Frosted Flakes? Yeah. We got a couple guys that say that. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, Want to drop another name on everybody? Let's do it. This is a family you're a big fan of as well. Oh, Mario yeah. Buford is in, the brother of Marquise, who played a little bit at the end of this past season for the Cornhuskers coming off of an injury. Mario is from DeSoto, Texas, one of the top defensive backs in the country. He really put up some big-time numbers and has a chance for the first time in his life, he says, to play on the same team as his brother. That's a really cool thing, but you're a fan of the Buford family. I am, and I, I chatted with the family, uh, Mario and uh, Marquise's dad on, on the sideline during an official visit, and I was like, we want all the Bufords here. We love <laughs> the Bufords here, and, and a great interview. Uh, Marquise is one of my favorite interviews to talk to. They got a, a really close-knit family, and, and that is that they didn't get a chance to play together in high school, and so now to have that opportunity here in college, it just not is not something that you always get a chance to see, but there's another guy that has a family tie to this program already, and, and brother and brother, and yeah, it's gonna be super exciting to see. And yeah, as I, I said, we'll take all the Bufords here. We, we love the Bufords around here. And DeSoto, Texas, DeSoto High School, one of the most dominating, dominant programs, high school programs in the country. I talked to another guy that signed out of Texas, and he said that DeSoto was by far, hands down, in his opinion, the best high school team in the entire nation. They could beat anybody across the country. So you got a chance to chat with Evan Cooper about Mario Buford. Backs coach Evan Cooper, let's start with Mario Buford. There's a familiar name to Husker fans. you got to like that lineage of a, a bigger brother already in the program. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mario's a good player in his own right. Uh, he's got some length. Uh, he's got some polish to him. He's not. He, he's not super raw. Uh, comes from a good program. Comes from a good family. Fast enough. Quick enough. You know all of those attributes that we look for. Um, he should be coming in to compete to play. Yep. I love him. Have you had to deal with having kind of siblings on the same team, maybe even in the same room before? I've never. No, I've never had that. Uh, but it'll be good, you know, his older brother, he'll, he'll know what to expect. Now, he's a football guy, a football family. He's been playing football his whole life. Uh, I'm excited to get him here. Mario committed back in June. He was a pretty early commit and didn't waver, did he, after no, that point? No, no. Um, again, he's, he's got some inside intel, <laughs> his, his brother. If he did commit, I'll be worried. Uh, his brother's actually playing for me now, so he, he can tell him everything he needs to know about the program and the room and me as a coach. And, Coach White and Coach Rule, uh, so it's a good idea. It's a good idea for him to come here. Mario Buford's 5'11 corner from Desoto, Texas, one of the Huskers in the DB room. And <laughs> think about Marquise because he was able to redshirt last year. It gives him another extra year of eligibility that he's going to get to Play be on together. the same team with his brother. Just guys saw Marquise a couple of days. This was in June, a couple of days after Mario committed, and he he had the biggest grin. Yeah. I know that surprises you that Marquise would be smiling. <laughs> but a biggest grin about the fact that his younger brother was going to come to Lincoln, Nebraska. I think it's a cool, cool story. Yeah, and I think Marquise knew for a while that was going to be, but he, he kept it to himself yeah. and, and let Mario do it on his own time and let it be about whatever, how Mario wanted to do it. But I think Marquise knew for a while that he was coming here. Part of this, I think one of the strengths of this class is going to be offensive line. We haven't yeah. announced one. We're ready to. Let's pop one out at you. And a Grant, big one. <laughs> a big one. Grant Bricks from Logan, Iowa, 6'6", 285. The Husker staff loves getting this young guy out of the state of Iowa, which, which has been known to produce a handful of really good offensive linemen. Nebraska put a press on him. They really battled some teams down the stretch to get Grant Bricks. It was a happy day in the office when he committed to the Cornhuskers. The number one 
player in the state of Iowa. That's always big when you can say you brought in that one of the best offensive linemen in the country. You know, when they were tr making a push there at the end, they brought in the semi truck uh, that was parked in front of his school. And then he did his announcement, his commitment video and, and also incorporated that semi truck. But, you know, you, you can tell, too, just he's already built some relationships to some of the names like Carter Nelson that, that's already signed as well that, um, you know, building those relationships with this recruiting class. But Donovan Riola did a heck of a job bringing in some of these offensive linemen in this group. It was a need. The numbers were a little bit down. And so they, they got some really good ones in this class. So let's hear from Coach Riola and what he's getting out of Grant Bricks. Joined by Husker offensive line coach Donovan Riola. Nebraska has yet another offensive lineman in this class, Grant Bricks from the state of Iowa. This is a guy you worked hard on. This guy, you must like him. Yeah, Grant's a, a great young man. You know, he came to summer camp two years ago, and uh, he was the best offensive lineman at the camp. Again, another high character young man. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to get him here um, and, and get to work with him. Um, you know, he comes, he, he's just a, small town Iowa kid and he's just a, a, a grinder, you know, high competitive dude and uh, I'm excited for him to come in and get to work. Can you gauge what kind of work ethic these guys have? You probably obviously talk to their high school coaches and that type of thing. And, uh, any worry about that with Grant? No, no, sir. You know, he, uh, you know, watching him compete um, in football, you know, he runs all over the field. He plays offensive line and defensive line in high school. Um, then you watch him wrestle and he's, you know, the, the biggest guy out there, but he's out keeping up, you know, in his, in his you know, uh, conditioning part of uh, wrestling and just everything he does is just full speed. Uh, it's always uh, pedal to metal. So I'm uh, really excited about Grant. Considered to be the top offensive lineman in the state of Iowa. Now he's a Cornhusker, Grant Briggs from Logan, Iowa. Another thing I really liked about, he was talking about his decision. He mentioned Corey Campbell, the strength and conditioning coach, and how much he can help develop him. I know that that's a big part of the recruiting for a lot of these guys is, is meeting with Corey Campbell and, and you know, the development that comes along in the weight room because they spend a lot of time in there, right? And so, and certainly for an offensive lineman that are looking to come in and, and grow and develop and be able to play in the Big Ten on the line in the Big Ten is a big part of it. And so he he made note of that and how, how impressed he was with Corey Campbell. Nebraska showed him how much they wanted him by sending that big old semi <laughs> over there and parking it in front of the school. They really wanted him. And again, I think this is going to be a big part of this class is this offensive line group. That's the first of what we hope are a lot here today. Speaking of big gets, Here's another one, and here's another one that the semi went to visit. We can now announce Carter Nelson from Ainsworth is in the fold for the Big Red, the huge tight end, 6'5", 225. His numbers are eye-popping, and so was his offer list, Jessica. So many people wanted Carter to be a part of their team. Yeah, and his numbers are eye-popping in every single thing. What what did he not do on a football right. field? He was a, he had racked up the passing yards, the rushing yards, receiving yards, a big frame. He, he's a, again, a, just a, a freak athlete, plays basketball. I loved he put out a video on his uh, social media dunking the basketball. So um, if, if you didn't follow along with what this program did last year, they had the Husker Olympics where they win and participated in a number of different things. They played pickleball, they played some sand volleyball, and then they had a dunk contest. And so Carter Nelson is already throwing his name in there to, to participate in the in the dunk contest. But big, big get. Here's another number one recruit in the state. So the, the top recruit in the state of Nebraska. We just talked about the number one recruit in the state Iowa. of Iowa. And we're going to hear that a, a couple more times as we welcome in these guys today. But yeah, a lot of, a lot of schools across the country a lot of those big name programs one of this guy one of this guy a lot of upside with him he's got a big old frame that he's going to be able to to grow into as well and you got a chance to, to chat with tight ends coach Josh Martin about Carter Nelson joined by Husker tight ends coach Josh Martin we have another Husker commit and a signee a national letter of intent has come in for Carter Nelson the big tight end from Ainsworth Nebraska you weren't the only ones that wanted Carter Nelson. A lot of people love this guy and his upside. Sure, yeah, no, there's no question. Uh, you know, obviously it was a very highly recruited guy and a guy that, you know, has kind of been on the radar for a long time with, uh, you know, with, with us for, and, and rightfully so, right, has, uh, has done a lot of great things at Ainsworth over his career. And, um, you know, it's really good with the football. It's a great combination, once again, of, of size and length and speed and athleticism and um, does a lot of different things, obviously, in a small town like Ainsworth, right, of, uh, you know, playing eight-man football. You know, he plays quarterback, receiver, running back. Uh, plays safety, you know, and rushes the, you know, rushes the passer on, on defense, returns kicks. I mean, really does, 
you know, is kind of a jack of all trades and really does everything. And, and uh, so he's a mismatch, um, you know, issue, uh, 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 matchup issue for people, I feel like, and uh, over the course of his career. And um, he's got a passion for the game and uh, competes at a really high level. And, um, and I couldn't be more excited to have him, uh, you know, join our team. And, and uh, he's going to fit in well in the, in the tight end room along with uh, the other guys that we have uh, coming in as well. So Just fired up about Carter. Doesn't move like a guy that's six five six six and pretty good basketball no, player, no, too. No, excellent basketball player. Yeah, and I, that's one of the things that, you know, that we kind of joke around at the, at the tight, room, uh, tight end room a lot of. You know, one of the best coaching points of you know of, uh, of a tight end is say, you know, you're, be big, right? And you're always open when you're, you know, six foot five, six, you know, six foot six, like a lot of these guys that we've signed. So, um, you know, we're excited about these guys and, and their uh, and their future. Should be Carter Nelson, the latest Cornhusker to sign the dotted line, the big tight end from Ainsworth, Nebraska. Jessica, you said what does he not do well? Ed Foley told me he goes, Greg, he's a great punter. He goes, he was <laughs> averaging like forty three yards a punt this year. He goes. I'm keeping that in my back pocket. You know, if we need a punt sometime, we can put him out there and punt. I mean, just watching these highlights, it's not even fair to the teams they're playing, right? He just, um, it, but he did a lot of the seven on seven stuff. So yeah. there's no doubt, you know, beyond just his high school, the the things that he can do. And again, a great relationship with some of the other guys in this recruiting class. But uh, here's the number one recruit in the state of Nebraska, that's big for this program. Huge, huge. The coaching staff all went out to Ainsworth. <laughs> all yeah. out there over the weekend uh, and out to Ainsworth. That's how much they wanted to make sure Nelson was a Cornhusker, and he is now. All right, we're going to leave the state of Nebraska and head south, back down to Texas. This staff obviously has those great ties in the state of Texas. They have found a defensive back at Braylon Prude from Pearland, Texas, Shadow Creek High School. Huskers love his upside. Six foot four, they like this body type. He's going to be a DB that you know, think about Buddha, right? How much we talked about Buddha throughout the fall. They envision Braylon kind of being in that same neck of the woods and you can see him on tape, long slender. He's going to add some weight when he gets here. Also runs track. They like those multi-sport guys. He may not be the most polished young guy coming out of high school, but they think this is the kind of guy they can really develop into a terrific player. This is the kind of high school recruit that this staff really loves. And, and Evan Cooper, we've heard a lot about how he's a film junkie and he studies all kinds of film, watches all kinds of film, and can see things on film that he likes, that he can work with, and, and no doubt this has got to be one of those guys that he's going to be excited to get his hands on it and work with in the secondary. And, and speaking of Coach Coop, you got a chance to chat with him about what they're getting out of Coop. Or we had actually White. Tony White. Tony White, the defensive coordinator, talked about Prude. Husker defensive coordinator Tony White with us. Nebraska has another defensive player in the full, Braylon Prude from the state of Texas. Big, long fellow, six foot four. Coach, tell us about Braylon. Yeah, Braylon was a was a pleasant surprise. Went down there with the staff to a, a camp in Houston. Got a chance to see some guys, uh, uh, you know, running around, and immediately, you know, how how uh, tall, how long this guy was. You know, it jumped out at you and. Again, you got a you got a chance to have have those Texas athletes run around right in front of you. I thought that uh, Coach Coop, Coach Rule, everyone to a T got a chance to to go over there and watch him. How how long, how twitchy, uh, how explosive he he was at that camp. And then you go and watch him on film, and you see those those same things of a versatile athlete. You know, a guy who can who can cover like a DB, but a guy who plays. You know that kind of outside linebacker role, that 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 hybrid type deal, like very similar to a Javen Wright. Um, I think you got to steal. This is a guy that you can almost tell he's going to need to add a little weight, get in the weight room. Coach Campbell's going to have to get a hold of him, but you can just see him maybe grow into himself in the next two to three years. Yeah, I mean, the, the he's at, he has some of the things you can't naturally teach. You know, he's got the length, he's got the size, he's got ability so it's going to be one of those great deals to watch him grow whether he stays at db whether he grows into a linebacker you know the sky's the limit for somebody like him braylon played at shadow creek high school this past year braylon Prue, the newest addition to the cornhusker defensive backfield thing too that's great about some of these young guys and we saw a number of those freshmen on both sides of the ball that really grew throughout a season but being that you have those four games you can kind of play with a little bit and get them some experience, but we saw them really come along, a lot of those younger guys throughout a season and, and develop, so certainly a guy to keep an eye on. Absolutely. Great rule, too, for college football. I've said that multiple times, but to be able to play four times and save a redshirt, college football's got it right. The other sports need to get with it on that rule, so let's, come on, NCAA, let's figure that out. We're going to stay in the DB room. We've got another one and another local product. 
Excited to announce Donovan Jones, the defensive back from Omaha North High School, is now going to be a Cornhusker. He's a Viking that will now be a Husker. Great program, Larry Martin's program, traditionally in the playoffs year after year after year. And this is a young guy that uh, the staff is also really excited about as well. Yeah, and, and here's another kid from the state of Nebraska. We're going to hear a lot of those guys coming up. This We're just kind of scratching the surface of those local kids, that local talent that wants to stay home, that, you know, watch this program from, from afar and are excited about the direction that it's headed. And it just means a little something different to be able to wear that in. So you got a chance to, again, talk with Coach White about what they're getting with Donovan Jones. Husker defensive coordinator Tony White with us. We have another edition of the Cornhusker football team. Young man from the state of Nebraska, Omaha North product, Donovan Jones. Coach, tell us about him. Yeah, Donovan, I mean, he's very similar profile to uh, Caleb. Uh, you know, a guy who you saw, you saw on film and you saw the ability. Uh, got a chance to work with him in camp. Uh, Coach Coop did a great job of, of, of putting him through some drills and and really putting eyes on him and alerting to the alerting the staff. Hey, this is guys. Uh, this guy's a guy who's going to end up blowing up and being being one of those guys that everyone wishes they had after signing day. And uh, got a chance to watch him. When you see this guy on film, you see he was playing his best ball as a senior. You know, he was really really disruptive, uh, tackling, covering space, coming down, filling the filling the run. Uh, really really excited to uh, get another hometown hero and and a guy who's playing his best ball late. Another guy that can run some track, do some of those type of things, and a Nebraska Cornhusker, that's gonna be a key. 100%, you know, again, you play DB in this defense with Coach Coop and, and, and the way Coach Rule wants to do it, uh, you better be able to do everything. Play the run, play the pass, come up and hit. So, uh, again, that's all the things he, he put on film, so. Good to announce, another Husker, Donovan Jones from Omaha North High School is in the fold. Love that term, hometown Husker. It is a pride. They want to dominate this state. They do not want a good player to leave this state. Donovan Jones is a very good player, and I'm glad to have him here as a Husker. Had a great senior season, cool. too, and um, you're going to hear from him coming up, but talked about being able to commit and really just let loose during his senior year after making that commitment and knowing he was coming here. Just got a chance to catch up with Donovan Jones. Well, we welcome in Donovan Jones of Omaha North. Donovan, congratulations. Uh, signing day is finally here. Uh, I know it can be a little bit of a, a stressful, long process, but how does it feel to officially be a Husker? It feels great just knowing that like, I'm officially like done with everything and just keep in touch with my team, my new teammates that I've just committed and all the new coaches. Just a great time. Well, take me through your decision process. You committed back in the summer. You went to camp here. Just walk me through that. Why you felt like this was the right spot for you? Just uh, like after I went on my official visit, like a week after I got the offer, just like that really like got me like locked in to the school. I just loved meeting like how the coaches like just got to talk with you. Like we had solo, we had solo meetings and things like that and just the environment it's like 45 minutes from home just it's a just great place so you came to friday night lights camp right tell me about that performance and, and what what was your approach to it and uh what you kind of wanted to show you could do when you came to that camp well yeah that camp was my last camp so i just like i wanted to ball out there obviously so i could get an offer and i ended up getting a wyoming offer and the nebraska offer and if I like, just like, it was just kind of like a last hope thing. Cause if I didn't like do good at any, if I didn't do good at the camp, I was going to commit to another school. So I'm just blessed that I performed well and showed out for the coaches. That's awesome. What does that mean to you that you can have that opportunity to earn a spot at a camp that this coaching staff does put value in that? Uh, it's just, I mean, it's just great. Like, you you know, like, if you show out in a camp, like some camps you go to, you don't know if you're going to get, like, looked at by the real coaches, like, if they're just there, like, for looking at certain people and uh, things like that. So I'm glad Coach Rule and Coach Cooper were there to watch and see what I can really do. So tell us about Coach Cooper, Evan Cooper, and, and what it's been like getting to know him and build that relationship with him. 
It's uh, it's great. Like he's a really cool dude. He coaches both the corners and the safeties. I'll most likely be a safety, and uh, he's just real fun. He's like an easy person to talk to, and he knows a lot about football. So when you announced your commitment to Nebraska, you gave a special shout out to your parents. You said, especially my parents, for never giving up on me. What what role do they play? in your progress as a football player and, and to be able to have this opportunity here today? Uh, like everything, like since, since I was a little kid, my dad played football at USD and he just wanted like me and my brother to be great at everything we do. So we put a lot of work in into football because that was our favorite sport and just like love them both. My mom showed up to everything. So that's great. So I, I've read a few articles on you, and we've, we've seen your film. You obviously are not afraid to be physical, right, uh, as a defensive back back there. Where does that come from? Why do you like the physicality of it? Uh, just, like, I've been playing, like, DB my whole life, and I just, like, progressively, like, once you just get used to, like, hitting, you can, like, the game just gets slower, and you just start moving faster and just like take on collisions and it don't feel like nothing, so. How just, exciting was it for you to watch what the, the Nebraska defense did last season and to be able to come be a part of that, uh, you know, just the way that they were able to really show out every single week? How exciting is that for a young defensive player coming in to join it? It was, it was great to see, like their defense took a big jump and I'm glad they ended up giving Tony White, that, Coach White that, that paycheck and it's going to be a great season coming on. You know, one of the things that this staff said last year, a year ago on signing day, is that they were going to keep the, the local talent here in Nebraska. You're one of those guys. You're one of those guys. How, how special is that, that they do put a lot of value in the players and the talent in this state of Nebraska? Uh, that's just, it's amazing. Like, because it, it just it got better. It's been getting better throughout the years. So I'm just glad they, find, they took a look at me, checked out my film, and made the move. How special is it going to be for you to get to wear that, that in on your helmet? It's going to be real special. I wanted to play uh, especially Power 5 football my whole life. And I just, just got to take it in and go to work. You know, you talked about potentially not having as many opportunities and – to, for every high school kid, this is their dream. So what does it mean to you to get to have this opportunity with Nebraska? Just, like, bless. Like, only 1% of kids go end up going Power 5 or Division 1 anyways. And that's just, you just got to you gotta be humble and take it all in because not everybody gets that chance. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you're going to play uh, basketball for Omaha North. You're going to run track. Uh, but what goes into these next few months for you before you um, come to campus in, in May or June? Just uh, continuing lifting and doing DB workouts and just running. With the school, I do DB workouts at uh, Warren Academy to just keep me in shape and know what I'm doing all the time. That's awesome. You know, when, when you committed and you had that offer, how much did that help you kind of relax, maybe be able to really ball out and have a great senior year? It was, it was huge. And committing in the summer, getting everything off your chest just makes you only think about your high school and just like helping them get as far as we can in the playoffs. Very cool. All right, I just got a few more fun questions for you. Let Husker fans get to know you a little bit. Who was your favorite player or athlete, any sport, growing up? I would say uh, my favorite player was always Aaron Rodgers for quarterback. But one of my, like, favorite athletes was I like Alvin Kamara a lot for football-wise. That's awesome. Who, what's your favorite hobby outside of football? I would just say... Uh, I like uh, fishing, camping, and just like hanging out with friends a lot. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. Favorite cereal? S I would say uh, kind of matters the day, but Cinnamon Toast Crunch or like Lucky Charms. You a big cereal guy? Uh, yeah, I would say so. All right. What's your Spotify rap look like? Who's your number one artist? I really don't listen to music like that. Really? I, in all seriousness, I listen to music on game days, 
But like when just walking around for fun, I don't listen to music. Okay, interesting. All right, last one for you. Probably the toughest. So I've got four yeah. choices of cookies. I want you to rank them, fourth being last, one being best. So you got chocolate chip, peanut butter, macadamia nut, and oatmeal raisin. I would go chocolate chip first. Uh, what was the second one? Peanut butter. Peanut butter. I would do uh, oatmeal raisin second. Uh, mm, actually, oatmeal second. Oatmeal third. Peanut butter. Or actually, macadamia nut second. Peanut butter last. Okay. I like it. I like it. I like white chocolate chips. So. Oh, okay. Well, appreciate your time. Congratulations again. And, and we'll look forward to seeing you here on campus come this summer. All right. Thank you. So um, appreciate Donovan joining me. He picked the time, but that was the bell going off. I, I don't think we kept him too much out of class, but uh, appreciate him spending some time. I hope he made the class. I hope he ended up getting <laughs> in there. As coaches will too. They'll probably call and ask him, did you make it in the class? Great to hear from him, and it's really good to have him as a Cornhusker. Let's do a little reset. We're at the top of the hour, 8 o'clock, which means now the wet mountain time zone can now sign there and send in their letters. We do have a couple of young men expected to come in from that mountain time zone. We've had eight announcements to this point officially in. Riola, Barney, Hill, Buford Bricks, Nelson Prude, and Donovan Jones. We have number nine ready, another in-state product. The only defensive lineman in this expected to be in this class, Ashton Murphy from the really good program up in Elkhorn, Elkhorn South. They had a tremendous season making it to the state championship game, and the Huskers have done well with guys from that particular high school, but Ashton Murphy is in. Yes, and uh, again, I, I got a chance to chat with him, and he talked a lot about, of course, Terrence Knighton and, you know, with what he's done with so many young players. I mean, look at the freshmen that were all over the field for the defensive line this season and the way Coach Knighton was able to develop and get those guys ready to play as true freshmen, which, again, is not an easy position no. to play as a true freshman. And so he, he talked about that and, and how excited he is to come work with him. And, you know, I think when you talk about recruits and, and the guys that when they're the position coaches, Terrence Knighton needs – been at the highest level he's he's played there he's been there he's done that and and how he can convey that to his guys and and really help them grow and develop and it was a fun group i mean i, I said it all throughout the year it was one of my favorite huddles to listen into and and to see that group interact and ashton murphy is excited to be a part of it and ashton you know i like those guys from really good programs that win year in and year out i think that winning attitude kind of gets itself into the locker room it's not the end all be all get that i get that but just when you win more weeks than you lose you feel like you're he can carry that attitude in. And Elkhorn South has done a pretty good job of producing great yeah, linemen, right? Sure have. All right, uh, here is Terrence Knighton on Ashton Murphy. Joined by Nebraska defensive line coach Terrence Knighton. The Oscars have added Ashton Murphy, young guy from Elkhorn, Elkhorn South, 65242. Let's talk about Ashton. What do you like about him? Excited about him. Obviously, a guy who played on the O line and D line in high school. They run a great program down there at Elkhorn South. And, uh, you know, first thing that sticks out to, sticks out to me, him defensive-wise, is quickness, his lateral movement. You know, you watched it this past season. We do a lot of movements up front with our line, and um, I'm just ex excited about you know his skill set, how hard he plays, uh, how twitchy he is, and for him to focus on one side of the ball now and be a dominant player on one side. And um, he has all the traits, uh, has the mindset, really smart football player. Um, they run a great system over there, like I said, Elkhorn South. You know, um, you know, he had he had to learn a lot to play left tackle. Had to learn a lot to play DN, um, and it's one of the high schools that you know they're pretty advanced in how they you know do things. Their playbook. So, very smart guy. Great student. Great family. Um, dad, Randy, mom, Ashley do a great job, and um, great kid. Excited for him. He's our type of guy. Helps have a team guys coming from winning programs, doesn't it? Because they have that mindset that they want to walk off the field as a winner. Absolutely. You want to recruit as many captains, leaders as possible so that guys come in and they understand, okay, I'm the young guy. I'm going to learn from the older guys and I'm going to take it and run with it. And he'll be a perfect fit in our room. And, you know, it's great with guys like Nash and Ty coming back and he gets to come in as a freshman and learn as much as he can from the older guys and Jamari Butler and those guys. So I'm excited to see him come in mid-year, change his body, you know, um, get acclimated to the playbook, get out there in spring ball. And, you know, it's always beneficial when guys can come in mid-year because spring ball is almost like your red shirt year. You know what I mean? So a lot of our guys, young guys that have had success this year came mid-year, so it allowed them to be ready to play. 
Ashton Murphy, the latest addition to the Husker defensive line room from Elkhorn South. Quite a few of these guys that are coming in in January, which is yeah. big for being able to be a part, go through spring ball, but also not just spring ball, but the mat drills and the things that they do in January and February leading up to when they take the field for spring football. Get with Coach Campbell, get in that weight room, put it on and go and get to work. So excited for Ashton to be a Cornhusker. We've talked about legacy guys. We think that'll be a big part of this class. We have another one to announce at this time. Let's go down to the Kansas City area. Liberty North High School's Keelan Smith. Who could forget the great Neil Smith, the great black shirt, All-American for the Huskers in the late 80s? Well, his son, Keelan, is coming to Nebraska. He was just yesterday named the Max Prep Missouri Player of the Year. So again, it goes to your thing about Iowa Player of the Year, Nebraska Player of the Year, now the Missouri Player of the Year. Yeah, and he had a great senior season. I mean, the numbers just are really uh, crazy. And again, 17 touchdowns, 1,268 yards receiving. He's also going to be an early enrollee, first team All-State. And not just, I mean, you, you saw several different outlets giving him the Missouri Player of the Year. So uh, certainly really did have a big senior season. Season and um, you got a chance to chat with Garrett McGuire about Keelan Smith. Joined by Husker wide receivers coach Garrett McGuire. The Huskers have another wide out, another name that Nebraska fans will be familiar with. The last name of Smith, Keelan Smith from Liberty North. His dad was Neil Smith, a great defensive player, black shirt for the Cornhuskers. Keelan Smith, what about this young fella? I mean, obviously, again, there's kind of a theme here. Grew up a, grew up a Husker, but what I love about Keelan is he is a productive player. He probably just came off one of the best years as a receiver in the state of Missouri, just statistically. Uh, they just won a state championship, so he's a winner. He knows how to win. Um, he's got great ball skills, can stretch the field vertically, and he's a tough dude. You know, he, he's a big receiver um, that's got really, really strong hands, catches the ball, gets vertical in a hurry, um, and, and you see he's going to win some 50-50 balls in the red zone. So. Uh, no, I'm, I'm excited about Keelan, a guy that, again, just super productive. Son of a black shirt, you have no choice but to be tough. you got to grow up with daddy in there. So <laughs> Absolutely. And, yeah, they won a state championship down in Missouri, and, yeah, he's impressive. 6'2", a little longer guy than a couple of the guys in his class. But, yeah, it, it looks like this is a heck of an athlete. Uh, yes, sir, absolutely. Keelan Smith, the son of Neil Smith, the latest Cornhusker to sign his national letter of intent. Won a state title as well. There's a number of these guys that finished as a state yeah. champs for their states and their states. And, and again, mentioned he's going to be an early enrollee, so they'll be able to get him here early and get to work with him early. Yeah, we had Benning here in Nebraska, won a state title. Keelan in Missouri. Buford won a state title down in Texas. So I love all of that. Jessica did have a chance to catch up with this legacy signee for the Cornhuskers, Keelan Smith. Well, we welcome in Keelan Smith, the wide receiver out of Liberty, Missouri, and a familiar name if you have been following Husker football for a while. But Keelan, welcome in. Uh, it's signing day, officially a Husker. How does it feel? Uh, it feels amazing. Um, I'm happy that it's the time's finally come um, for me to sign and, uh, you know, get, get to campus on January 12th. You had a, a heck of a season over the, the past season. You're the Missouri Offensive Player of the Year, first team All-State. Your team won a state title. Uh, how was that season? How was that being a part of that and, and getting to kind of finish out with a bang before you come be a Husker? Um, it, it, it meant everything to me. You know, uh, I've been – that's been my only goal in high school uh, the last four years now is just to win a state championship. So it's to contribute and do what I did for my team. It uh, means a lot to me. Um, you know, just an unbelievable season and – Excited that I made history with my, with my uh, teammates and forever friends. Not very many people get to hold up that trophy. How did that feel? Uh, it felt amazing. You know, I, I dreamt about that several times, uh, you know, over the past years. So it, it meant a lot, you know, and I'm, I'm happy that it happened. And, you know, I ended out with a bang, like you said, and um, get ready to get to Nebraska, hopefully do the same thing, you know. You know, you'd committed. How much did that alleviate maybe some of the pressure, too, knowing, hey, I can just focus on my high school season towards the end and, and really just do what I do in high school and, and finish strong and not have to worry about the college recruiting part of it anymore? It was definitely day and night. Uh, I mean, I committed before, like, our uh, summer camp and stuff like that. So I can definitely tell that, like, I was definitely stress-free, you know, recruiting-wise, and I could just focus on football and school. So... It was a big game changer, and um, I'm happy that I chose to come in when I did. Um, yeah, it, it was good. 
Well, your your stats for this past season were, were jaw dropping, and again mentioned the the Missouri Offensive Player of the Year. But you're going into every single game knowing that probably defenses are scouting you, trying to take you out of it. How did you con How were you able to continue to produce week in and week out, knowing that you were on probably at the top of the list of every scout? Um, you know, I, I, I'm kind of you know not not in a cocky way whatsoever. Uh, I'm kind of used to it. You know, I, it's been happening like that for like the last two years now, so. I've kind of just like learned mentally and physically to know how to adapt to that. Um, you know, if sometimes it, it's not always about me, you know, it's not always about me. So sometimes it's uh, relieving, you know, getting people, getting people, getting double teamed, whatever it takes to get my teammates the ball, you know, uh, stopping, if they're trying to stop our pass, you know, allow them to be able to run the ball. So, you know, just like I said, just do whatever I have to do just to, to win. So, yeah. Awesome. Great perspective. Uh, wide receiver or tight end? What 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 did those conversations look like? I've read somewhere maybe you, you played a little tight end. What does that look like here in Nebraska? Um, well, just talking with Coach Rule, I'm definitely you know I'm gonna come in as a wide receiver and uh, just adapt however I you know however my body changes, however how however much taller, however much weight I gain. So you know we're just gonna play by ear, but you know I'm coming in as a wide receiver. That's awesome. Well, you know, some people might say, no, I just want to play this position. But we've seen the this coaching staff make some position changes with some guys, and it's really worked out to their benefit. How important is that for you to kind of be open-minded, whatever they see is your best fit? How how much trust do you have in that? Oh, I mean, I have all the trust, you know, that, uh, you know, plays into, like, me choosing to go to Nebraska. You know, I obviously trust Coach Rule and his staff. Um you know, like, I just want to win, so I'll play whatever position they put me in. They know what they're doing, you know, and they know what's in my best interest, so I'm just going to follow them and do whatever they tell me to do. Uh, just go hard, do what I do, and we'll be good. Awesome. Well, you obviously have a, a connection to Nebraska with your dad playing here, but when you're, you're going through it yourself and trying to find the right spot for you, what was it about the staff and, and Nebraska for you that it fit, was a great fit for you? Well, I mean... Ever since my very first, like, college visit, uh, I kind of knew that Nebraska was the place for me. Um, it's always felt like home. And um, especially when Coach Rule and them came in, uh, the whole staff just welcoming me, uh, you know, wanting me wanting me there and everything like that. So, you know, it was amazing. Uh, I really like – I love all those guys up there. And uh, I'm very excited to, you know, spend the next three, four years uh, learning from them, learning from different perspectives, uh, hopefully getting me to the next level. How special was it when you committed to get to share that with your dad? Uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, I, the way I really committed was uh, Coach Roy had FaceTimed me uh, when he was at practice, and he was like, man, I don't really do this a lot. So you, you should feel very special that I'm, I'm, I'm calling you during a practice right now. But he's like, we need you here. We need you here. And I was like, Coach, I'll make it happen because I already knew that's where I wanted to go. So I called my mom. She was like, let's do it. I called my dad, and he was like, Let's do it, son. So, I mean, he, he was very happy, you know. Uh, like I said before in other interviews and stuff, like, he uh, he never tried to, like, force me to go to Nebraska because, um, you know, he, he can't be very biased about it. You know, it's my journey and everything. So, he was he was pretty happy whenever I chose Nebraska, though, because, you know, obviously he went there and, you know, his legacy behind it. So, you know, just looking forward to, you know, making my own legacy and, yeah. What role did he play in the football player you became um, and, and just throughout this whole process how how much perspective did he try to give you and, and how much did that help you having uh, you know a, a dad that went through this and has such a good perspective of all of it I mean yeah he definitely knows what he's talking about you know uh, he's been to, in the league for you know all those years and everything so you know I, he, he gives me football perspectives and you know he just tells me just gives me advice uh, after games and all that so and he, obviously during the game, you know, he's the only voice I can hear. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, he gives me a lot of perspective. And, he, you know, he teaches me a lot about the game of football and just a lot about the mind, uh, the mindsets going into each and every aspect of the game. Is that because you hear his voice in your head or you hear him literally from the stands? Uh, I literally hear him from the stands. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Like, everything else I kind of block out is just a big jumble. You know, it, it, you know I'm just locked in. I always hear my dad, though. He's like, he's just the one voice. Ever since I was a little kid, I can just hear him. You know, he just sticks out in the crowds. <laughs> well, he was an All-American defensive lineman. How did you wind up on the offensive side of the ball? Um, you know, I played 
growing up, I played both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, I played DM because all the coaches growing up thought that I was going to be like my dad. Uh, I don't know, really. To be honest with you, I just I, – like my freshman year, I played outside linebackers. So, and I don't know. Whenever I came to Liberty North, uh, I told them I wanted to play receiver just to try it out. And, you know, ultimately, it, it was in my best interest. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Well, um, you decided to come early. You're going to enroll here in January. Take us through that decision, why you wanted to, to come and, and come here early and get things rolling early. Um, you know, I think it's just in, just in my best interest, um, talking with the coaching staff. They, uh, you know, especially since I can do it um, through my school and everything. So shout out to my counselors, all that. Uh, helped me get set up. And, you know, I was eligible to graduate early. So, you know, that's what I did. Um, it'll help me get there, get there on campus a little earlier than, you know, some of the other guys. So, you know, yeah, just, just basically what my coaches told me, they suggested that I should do it. And, I was able to, so I did it anyway. Well, we saw some freshman wide receivers make some big plays for this offense last season. How exciting is that for you, knowing that if you come here, you put in the work, you do what you're supposed to do, you're going to get a chance to play early if, if you know, you, you, if they need you and, and you do things right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I hear about it all the time from a lot of other people, you know, especially watching the games, you know, all, you know, all the freshmen playing. So it, it's pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, I still got to put that work in. Uh, just being able to learn from freshmen that, like, know what they're talking about, especially since they just did it last year, it will be very helpful to me. Um, just, just learning from the coaching staff. And, yeah, I'm very excited to possibly be able to get on the field my freshman year. You know, growing up and in, in having a Hall of Fame and All-American dad, was it, I guess, how did you find your own love for the game? How did you fall in love with it for yourself separately of, of that and, and that kind of talk about, oh, his dad plays football, so he's going to play football, but just kind of finding it for yourself and finding that love for yourself. How did that happen for you? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it just comes natural to me, I feel like, uh, just through my dad. But, I mean, it's in my blood. So, and I've always just been like a – I've always wanted to play sports. Um, growing up, I honestly wanted to play basketball. Uh, so, like, football is really my second love. And so I got to about, like, seventh, eighth grade. And then I decided, like, football was really, like, what I needed to do. So um, that's, that's really what it was. Uh, it, it was cool growing up. Like, it, it, I, everyone was always telling me, like, how it was. Like, obviously, I wasn't a, alive when my dad was playing and all that stuff. So I never really know. But, you know, it's cool to hear about what everyone's experiences were watching my dad and everything. And, you know, like I said, I just want to make my own legacy, um, you know, following his footsteps for sure. But, you know, I'm always wanting to, you know, surpass him any way I can. You know, that's my challenge to myself. And he knows that too. So that's what I'm, you know, that's what I'm looking forward to. That, absolutely. Great perspective there. Okay, I got some fun questions for you. Let Husker fans get to know you a little bit. Who was your favorite player or athlete growing up? Um, football-wise, uh, definitely Devin Hester. I used to be a big Chicago Bears fan uh, growing up, and just seeing what he did, like returning the ball and when he went to receivers, just absolutely crazy. Uh, so, yeah, that was definitely my favorite football player. But, like, my favorite athlete altogether had to be Der uh, Derrick Rose. Uh, MVP Derrick Rose is crazy to watch because, you know, like, I wanted to play basketball growing up. So that was definitely my favorite athlete. What would you like about his game, D. Rose? <laughs> D. Rose, he, I just think he's a very consistent player. He uh, very skillful. Um, yeah, I mean, he just just amazing to watch. You know, he just was all over the place. He was a great team player. Um, yeah, that's that's what I love most about him. Just just absolutely like incredible in his prime. You know, too bad he had those injuries. But. Yeah, for sure. Okay, favorite hobby outside of football, basketball. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't, I don't really play basketball anymore. You know, I'll, I'll put up a couple shots here and there, but, you know, I just love to, you know, go to the gym, work out, uh, sleep, I like to hang out with my friends all the time. Uh, you know, I'm a pretty normal person. I, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, favorite cereal? Uh, I don't even eat cereal. <laughs> I, I really don't. I'm not a big cereal guy, but if I was, I like Fruity Pebbles, maybe. Um, yeah, probably Fruity Pebbles. That's the only one I've ever eaten, honestly. Lucky Charms are cool, I guess. That's a good choice, good choice. Okay, Spotify Wrapped, who is your number one artist? Um, Rod Wave. I, uh, 
I was in the top 0.01 listeners uh, back-to-back years. Um, yeah, broad wave. But honestly, I've, I've been knowing that I'm coming to Nebraska, so I know I've been having to get my country music up. So I've been <laughs> listening to Morgan Wallen, too. Don't worry. Nice. Well, nice. That's awesome. Okay. Rank these cookie flavors, okay? From four being the worst, one being the best. So we got chocolate chip, macadamia nut, oatmeal raisin, or uh, peanut butter. All right. Last place, got to go to peanut butter. I do not like peanut butter whatsoever. Wow. Um, number three, I'll have to put, like, chocolate chip. Really? I'm not a big, not a big chocolate guy, you know. But I, I, I still like chocolate chip cookies. Uh, then I'll put macadamia, white chocolate macadamia, and then oatmeal raisin. I don't know why, what it is. Nobody likes oatmeal raisin. I'm the only one. Uh, I go to, a, like, go to, like, a team dinner or whatever. They have, like, a cookie platter. Uh, I'm the only one that takes the oatmeal raisin, so yeah, I, I guess that makes me a little different. But yeah, you're the you're the first uh, signee that I've talked to that picked oatmeal raisin first. And on our Huskers Radio Network broadcast team, we have a big debate on it. And I hate oatmeal raisin cookie. Our play-by-play guy, our color analyst Damon Benning and Greg Sharp, they're big oatmeal raisin guys. So you can join along with oh, them yeah, on those them. oatmeal shout raisin cookies. What? Yeah. I said shout out to them because they <laughs> they know what they're talking about. Yeah, it's would, a big controversy because I just don't like peanut butter, and I know a lot of people put that number one, number two. Can't do it. I wouldn't go as far to say that Greg and Damon know what they're talking about. I might have to edit that part out. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Thank you so much for your time. Great stuff, and, and can't wait to see you here in Lincoln here in a couple weeks. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for having me on. Uh, GBR, let's get it. Love it. He was fun. He was fun to talk to, but there's you another oatmeal raisin guy. I'm not supposed to have favorites, but... <laughs> Good for Keelan. Yeah. Love Neil, his dad. That is fantastic. I'm glad he's here. I know the Husker staff really excited about him as well. We have another one to announce that is in the fold for the Cornhuskers, and we're coming back to Nebraska for this next announcement. Tight end Eric Ingerson from Papio. He went to Papillion La Vista High School. This was a flip. He had initially committed to another school, but now is going to be a Cornhusker, and I know this staff was glad to get this big fella. Remember, Luke Lindemeyer is a Papio guy as well that are tight end for this team. Yeah, and Eric's uncles played at Nebraska. He talked about following in their footsteps and, and dreaming about playing for the Huskers as a, a young kid. He's a big, big family guy and, and wanted to be close to home, so it meant a lot to him, um, you know, and, the, and just getting to know this new staff and which a lot of these guys that maybe have been recruited for a while and, and with the new coaching staff, just getting to watch the, the season unfold and, and get to build those relationships. And But I know, again, here's another another Nebraska kid that means a lot to wear that in. Played both sides of the football, so he could maybe be a guy that they experiment with, but I think initially it started him out in that tight end room. All right, and you got a chance to, to chat with tight ends coach Josh Martin about Eric Ingerson. Joined by Husker tight ends coach Josh Martin. We have another tight end to talk about in this class, Eric Ingerson, who is from Papio with the Papio High School. Local kid. You got him to flip from another school. I bet you're excited about Eric. Oh, fired up about Eric. There's no doubt. Um, he is uh, he is one of the one of the biggest guys I've ever seen coming out of high school. I mean, Eric is a legitimate, you know, six foot seven, you know, 250 pounds, um, you know, can run, can you know, can high point the ball, can catch the ball really well. Um, is a really good inline blocker. Plays with a lot of uh, uh, physicality. Plays with a mean streak. You know, tries to finish blocks. And I think one thing that, you know, when you're that big, sometimes uh, there's a lot of awkward movements and things like that. And with him, you don't see a ton of that, right? The way he can roll his hips on contact. The way he can, um, you know, move his feet and drive. And um, you know, he's a mismatch problem for for a lot of people. And so. Um, couldn't be more excited to have Eric, you know, join our football program and, and uh, you know, a, a local kid, a kid that's wanted to be here his whole life, has grown up, a, you know, a, a Husker fan. Um, and so he's, uh, you know, obviously excited to be here and we couldn't be more excited to have him here. Has he come down and been around the program some in the fall? Oh, he's here all the time. He's knocking my doors down all the time. He's, he probably was, I don't know, at, you know, four or five different practices throughout the course of the season, you know, throughout the weeks and stuff like that. Was it every, every game after we got him to flip? And so, um, you know, couldn't be more excited about Eric and uh, what he's going to bring to our football team. But just a a guy that can do a lot of different things. Um, like I said, you can just see in some of these clips here, just the way that he can move, you know, plays, plays defense as well. And, and a guy that's just very, very athletic, you know, uh, especially for his size and the things that he can do is, uh, is really uncommon and something that, you know, we're, uh, you know, couldn't be more excited about his future and, and uh, to be a part of our football team. There he is, the newest Cornhusker, Eric Ingerson from Papillion, Nebraska. He's the latest Cornhusker. 
good to have him in the fold. And again, you love getting those guys who maybe think about going somewhere else, commit somewhere else, and get them to come back and be a part of Husker football. So great to have him. We're going to kind of continue the theme with tight ends. We're going to go down to Texas for another one. Ian Flint from Katy, Texas. That's another hotbed for high school football. And, you know, you're talking about players of the year. He may not be the player of the year, but he's rated as the number one tight end in the state of Texas. So this is, again, the staff, Jessica, using their connections down in the Lone Star State. Yeah, and, and we're seeing a few tight ends that we're going to add to this class and, and different kinds of tight ends, which is per the theme that we saw that's already on campus here. But, right. you know, some, some pass catching tight ends. And Ian uh, takes a lot of pride in his blocking, and uh, you're going to hear from him, and it is a great perspective, a, a true tight end about it uh, doesn't really care if he's in the stat sheet or not. He, he likes uh, punishing people on the block, but when his opportunity does come to, ca come to catch a football, he uh, certainly makes the most of it. So, uh, But, yeah, another highly rated kid out of the state of Texas, that pipeline back to Texas, big for that to open up for this staff and, and the ties to Texas down there. And, and here is Coach Martin on Ian Flint. Joined by Husker tight ends coach Josh Martin. Ian Flint just got his letter of intent. Young man from Katy, Texas. Coach, tell us about him. Yes, yeah, so Katy. Uh, um, um, you know, Ian coming out of Katy, out of Katy Taylor. Um, you know, his uh, mom and dad were both. Uh, you know, it's a legacy here. Mom and dad were both throwers on right. the on the track team here back in the '90s. Uh, really good player, great size, uh, a great combination of size, skill, and uh, you know, can do a lot of different things with the football. Can catch the football. Can run. Um, you know, good in the open field is a really good inline blocker as, as well as playing, um, can play off the ball. But he's a guy like, you know, one of the things we look at it, at the tight end position is a guy that can do kind of all three things, right? You can play in line, uh, you can play off the ball in the slot, and then you can play, uh, you know, in the backfield as well. And so he's definitely a guy that has shown that on his tape. His uh, guy's got, you know, a lot of a lot of size, a lot of, and, um, you know, a lot of, um, uh, you know, a lot of um, strength, you know, and, and uh, you know, good at the point of attack. and. Um, you know, as a guy that we're, uh, you know, we're definitely really excited about to come join our program. Number one rated tight end in Texas, 255. Doesn't hurt to have that Husker no. connection in the household no, either. Mom no, and dad probably pushing there's no, for it. There's no doubt. And sister being here as well. You know, sister's a thrower here. That's and right. so, you know, it was, uh, but a lot of people think, well, it's just because of, you know, the family ties. And obviously that's a, that's a big deal. But, you know, he's, he's a really good football player and a really good get. And somebody we're, uh, you know, we couldn't be more excited to have on our football team. Ian Flint, the latest Cornhusker to send in his national letter of intent from Katy, Texas. So, We've talked a lot about the legacies that their dads played football, but here's another legacy, yeah. a track and build legacy and, and a sister that's already here. I love the family ties. It's it's kind of a theme of this class, right? Well, it gets you in. It gets you kind of in the conversation with young guys, particularly the, when they're not from it, living in Nebraska. If you've got that, you know they probably grew up with the Go Big Red chants in the house and Nebraska apparel spread throughout the house. But this is a guy that keep an eye on. I, this would be, a, I think, a position change possibility down the road for Ian. Not saying he isn't locked into tight end, but look at that frame, 6'4", 255. He could bulk up being an offensive lineman. Again, this staff loves to kind of tweak with those type of things. So I'd be interested in keeping an eye on that, but I know they're excited about Ian being a Cornhusker moving forward. All right, uh, speaking of big guys, big offensive linemen, we have another one. Well, actually, we're going to hear from Ian Flint first before we move on with another young man who is signed today. Here's Jessica with Ian. Well, we welcome in the tight end out of Katy, Texas, Ian Flint. Ian, thanks so much for being here with us. Congratulations. Signing day is finally here. I'm sure it's a long process. How does it feel that it's it's here and you're officially a Husker? I'm, I'm extremely excited. I've uh, I've been wanting to play for this program for a while now. Uh, parents, parents both went there, so it's kind of in my blood. So I, I just want to. I just want to get to work with my with my future teammates, and I uh, can't wait to be in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. That's amazing. So you, you mentioned the bloodlines here. Your sister also is a member of the track and build team, but I'm sure it's more than just the the connection to Nebraska. You committed back in April. What was it about this this coaching staff and what they've started to implement that you felt like it would be a good fit for you football wise? Uh, I, I I have to start with Coach Rule. Coach Rule is. He's he's just a likable guy, and he 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 really gets you going. He is this, he's he has such a passion for the game, and he he really convinced me that Nebraska is the place for me. And uh, yeah, the rest of his staff, Coach Satterfield, Coach Martin, and at that time Coach Wager, they all made it very clear that uh, I they made it very clear that I'd love to play for them, and just the whole atmosphere and everyone was so welcoming. 
So tell us about your style. Uh, I was reading up on you. Apparently you like to block, right? And, and we saw the Titans very heavily vol in, uh, um, involved with this offense last season. But uh, tell us about your style and how you think it will fit in, into what they are trying to do here offensively. Honestly, I'm, I'm good for whatever. I, I can catch the ball very well. I wasn't able to showcase that as much in high school. But when I got thrown the ball, I made sure to make it count. But, yeah, I really enjoy blocking. It's uh, quite fun. And being able to put someone in the ground <laughs> with all your force is, is probably one of the best feelings. So if Nebraska wants a blocking tight end, they'll get a blocking tight end. If they want to throw me the ball, I'm, I'll take care of that as well. I love that answer. Spoken like a true tight end right there. Uh, doesn't always have to be in the stat sheet. Uh, how, did, how did that game, how did that part of your game become so apparent, the, the blocking part of it? Um, why is that important for you? I guess in Texas, uh, we've always been a run-dominant run high school, so I, I just got good at blocking. I mean, you, you learn the, I learned the technique. Uh, my high school actually had two four-star linemen when I was freshman, so they were able to help me out. I was able to learn a lot from just, I was just I was just trying to do what I could for the team. That's awesome. So you, you talked about your dad, your mom, both coming here, and then your sisters here. What were some of the things that your your family told you about Nebraska and how you'd like it? They, well, I'll get to the negative part afterwards. But uh, <laughs> they told me about they told me how uh, an amazing place Lincoln is, and once you get up there, you feel like it feels it's very welcoming. It's a nice atmosphere and. They really enjoyed their time, and all, they talked about all the food, all the, the good places they ate. They talked about Runza, and then they talked about uh, the Mexican place. That's not one, that's not my mom's quite. It's not my mom's app. Uh, that's not what my mom's into. It's called like chimichanga. No, I, I, it's still up there because I found it when we went on the official, but I don't recall what it's called. But the negative part was my mom. First thing my mom said was, I'm going to freeze my butt off. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Um, you know, just the how special is that for you get to, to get to share that with your family? I mean, not many people get to say they came to the same school and were student athletes with their siblings, but then that your, your dad was a, a student athlete here. How special is that for you and your family? It's really special. Um, my mom... She gets to – when we landed on the official, I believe it was, she met like a, one of her classmates who she hasn't seen in 20 years. And when they come up, they get to see old friends and they, they just get to get – they get to reminisce through us and then tell us about all their stories, which are really cool. That's awesome. So you, you had a visit from Coach Rule back in December. How much fun was it for him to get to come see you a couple weeks before you signed? That was really fun. We took him to a local Tex-Mex place, and uh, he had – he had – everyone was having sh shrimp. I think he had sh – no, he had he had fish tacos. And, uh, yeah, it was just – it was fun to get some one-on-one -on -one time with him. He's, a, he's, he's the best. He's a super nice guy and just talked about everything going on in our lives that wasn't football, and he made me feel very confident in my decision. This staff, they're big foodies. What did he think of your, your choice of where you took him to eat? Supposedly, he told my sister all about it, and he's uh, he can't wait for his next trip down here to get some more fish tacos. But my mom is from the Czech Republic, so she makes a lot of cultural food from the Czech Republic, and we were really hoping we, she could cook for him and uh, get him a a little bit in, intertwined with the Czech food, but sadly him and Coach Martin weren't able to make it to my house. Well, maybe next time they come down to, to Katie, right? You know, the, the state yes, of Texas produces elite high school talent year in and year out. Of course, Coach Roll, his time at Baylor, and, and then when he, was, when he was hired here, said that it's going to be an emphasis that they are going to open that pipeline back up to Texas. You're a Texas kid. How how important is that, that the, the talent from Texas is going to have that pipeline back up here to Nebraska? It's it's really important. I know the Nebraska kids, they're homegrown. They're, they, got the, they got the farmer strength. But, I mean, 
Texas football is the best football. I mean, DeSoto, I think DeSoto would beat anyone in the nation right now. So to get Mario Buford, who we got from DeSoto, to get any of the guys that are coming from Texas, Gibson Pyle, and Dylan originally was from Texas, we're all, they, they play football different down here in Texas. That's awesome. So you made the decision to come early. Take us through that decision and, and why would that was important for you to enroll in January? I, I love football and I really hope that it can uh, take me places. So I want to I wanna get on the field as soon as possible. And I thought that if I come early and get my time in with the team lifting and doing spring ball, I think that that would get me the possibility to be on the field next fall. Very cool. All right. I just got some fun questions to ask you here. Maybe let Husker fans get to know you a little bit better. Who was your favorite player or athlete, any sport growing up? Uh, Johnny Manziel. <laughs> really? Yes, ma'am. I, I love the way he played football and he made it look really easy. All right. Back when he was at Texas A&M? Yes, ma'am. All right. What's your favorite hobby outside of football? Uh, me and my friends recently picked up poker. That's been a, that's been a blast. I, I enjoy watching movies. I just, I love, I love being outdoors as well with my friends and family. All right. Favorite cereal. That would have to be uh fruity pebbles. Fruity pebbles. Nice. Do you have a favorite restaurant or food? You, you, you talked a lot of food and apparently your family is, is big into food. Do you have a favorite spot? Yes, we're bringing the food, and uh, this one's this one's going to be tough living in Nebraska. My favorite spot's In and Out and Waterburger. Well, it'd have to be a, a something that you do when you go back home, right? Um, okay, <laughs> what does your Spotify Wrapped look like? Who is your number one artist? That was Mac Miller, and then a ton of country. I had Cody Johnson all over there, Chris Stapleton. <laughs> You know, we, they got some good concerts here in, in Lincoln at, at PBA. I, I heard my sister told me she, she was handed some Zach Bryan tickets and she uh, turned it down. What? We got to have a talk with I, her I about that. <laughs> I've, been, I've been asking her about it. <laughs> All right. This will be a good one for you. Uh, rank these cookie flavors. All right. I'm going to give you four types of cookies. Rank them from fourth last to first best. Okay. Chocolate chip, peanut butter, Oatmeal raisin, macadamia nut. I would just flip it around. Macadamia nut, oatmeal raisin, peanut butter, then chocolate chip. All right. Awesome. Well, great stuff. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations again, and we'll look forward to seeing you here in January. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And that is Ian Flint, the tight end out of Katy, Texas, Taylor High School. Appreciate your time. I started to question throughout that interview if I was talking to an offensive lineman or a tight end, you know? It's kind of like <laughs> Searles a little bit and uh, keeps bringing up the food. But hopefully Coach Rule gets back down there and tries some of his mom's check food. Oh, absolutely has to do to do that. He, he, I love how much Nebraska knowledge he has, even though he didn't grow up in this state. But with his sister here and family, mom and dad, he's got a lot of it anymore. Yeah, someone said on the chat, wait until he tries a runza. He's tried a runza. Yes, yeah, he's a fan. Because his family has talked about runzas up here. So he, he's, he's had runza. He's a fan. Good to have and Flint part of the Nebraska family now. Well, we've had people go, we're the big guys, we're the big guys. We've talked about Grant Bricks. We have another offensive lineman now to officially announce as being in the fold. And we're going right back to Iowa again for the next one. Jake Peters from Cedar Falls. Oh, by the way, I think our, I think our AD is from Cedar Falls. 6'300", 260 pounder. And uh, again, this is a, a, a good get for Nebraska to get another big offensive lineman in the class. Yes, and you want to look at his um, offer list. It's pretty impressive. Brown, Columbia. Oh, smart guy. You know, it is not easy to get into those uh, colleges. So really, it's really important to him. He's got a high academic standards. His dad was a, a college football player at South Dakota, All-American defensive lineman, but uh, he, he's another guy that came to camp and was able to earn an offer at camp, which which meant the world to him and uh, felt like home. A Iowa kid felt like home when he, he stepped on campus, but you know, again, talking with these offensive linemen throughout the, the last couple weeks, it's fun to hear them say almost exactly what you're hearing the current 
uh, Husker offensive lineman talk about the, the closeness of it. How much when he came on campus, getting that feel of, of how tight knit this group is and wanting to be a part of that. And so it's it's pretty special that, that the culture that uh, Coach Riala is putting in place with the current Huskers are carrying over to these, these recruits. And that's a big part of why they want to come be a part of it. Uh, speaking of Coach Riola, you got a chance to ask him about Jake Peters. Join my Husker offensive line coach Donovan Riola. Nebraska has another offensive lineman, a part of this class. We're excited about a young man from the state of Iowa, Jake Peters. Coach, you excited about Jake? Yeah, absolutely. You know, he's a, a high character young man. Um, you know, he came to summer camp as well, and uh, you know, he uh, performed well. He ran well. A uh, physical guy. I mean, he plays his he plays a high intensity, uh, ultra competitor, um, and he's just a great young man. 60, 260 is what we've got him listed at in the bios today. Obviously, he's going to have to put on weight. Does do you think he's got the frame to be able to do that? Yes, definitely. Um, you know, he'll, he'll he'll put on the weight. Uh, he's currently playing basketball. He's a start starter on the basketball team, so you know that obviously helps out with his footwork and and keeping his athleticism. So, pretty good. Uh, I think he threw the shot put too and yeah. track. Yes, he'll he'll end up uh, doing throwing some some in track uh, at the end of the year. So. You know the half life directors from his hometown. Awesome. Yes, he is. Yes, sir. Yep. That's where Trev's from. <laughs> Got to so. keep Trev happy. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, Jake Peters is like a kid that's going to keep you pretty happy. It'll be a nice addition. Definitely. Jake Peters from Cedar Falls, Iowa, is the newest Cornhusker. Cedar Falls also the home of Northern Iowa University, who's on the Husker football schedule next fall. Just got a chance to catch up with a young man from the state of Iowa. Well, we welcome in the offensive lineman out of Cedar Falls, Iowa, Jake Peters. Thanks for joining us. Congratulations. You're officially a Husker. How does it feel that I know this can be a process, but to, to have signing day here and to actually make it official, how does it all feel? Yeah, it feels amazing to be a part of uh, Nebraska and to officially call myself a Nebraska Husker. Uh, and I'm super excited to be a part of uh, Coach Rule and Coach Rail as a uh, football team. That's awesome. Well, take us through your decision. Um, I know that you were kind of waiting on a Power 5 offer, and then it came in, but how you landed on Nebraska, how you felt like it was the right fit for you? Yeah, so during the summer, I was going into football camp season without really a Power 5 offer, and then Nebraska calls me and uh, invited me to go to their camp, and so I thought that was a pretty good opportunity, and I thought I had a chance to get an offer, so I w went into camp. Uh, camps pretty well and then really liked how coach uh, Rayola was coaching there and how he coaches um, and then after that camp they decided to offer me and then uh, obviously super excited to get offered by a place uh, with the history that Nebraska has um, and then I decided to set up an official visit the next week uh, just so I could get to know the coaches get to know the campus and all that stuff a lot more so then the next week I went on my official visit there um, and it just felt like home. I got to spend some time with the uh, offensive linemen and I'm just super pumped to be able to uh, be around those group of guys because everybody around there talks about how close mm -hmm. that offensive line room is. And so I'm really excited to be a part of that and just be a part of a big friendship. And it's really a family there. And so I really want to be a part of a family. That's amazing. You know, the coaching staff has, has talked about how important the camps are going to be. And so for someone like you, how good is that to be able to have that opportunity to go earn an offer and to, to be able to maybe catch some eyes in a way that maybe you hadn't had that opportunity before? Yeah, that was a super special opportunity. It's kind of those ones that you dream about as a kid. You go to camp, coaches really like what you did there. And then you get to go to the head coach's office and they offer you right there. I mean, that, that was a dream come true. And so that's super special. And it just holds true, like, to what they said. I can be an example for those kids to come to show why you want to perform well at camps and what the coaches can do for you if you perform well. Oh, that's awesome. What did you feel like you did that, that caught their attention there at that camp? Uh, I just tried to be myself. Uh, co my coaches tell me to just try and be the best high school athlete that I can be. So I just tried to showcase that at that camp, and I just tried to put my best foot forward, and I think I did that, and they saw that and liked what they saw. 
You know, every offensive lineman that we talk to, whether it be the guys that are already here playing for Coach Rayola or the ones that are committing to play for Coach Rayola, have mentioned that family aspect of it and how close knit and tight knit that group is. What does that mean to you as an off offensive lineman? How important is it to have that close knit uh, type of feel as an offensive line group? Yeah, that's super important. I can already feel it like. They had us go to the, one of the volleyball games after a football game, and I got to see Ben Scott and Nuri Nuweeli there. And I just started talking to them like I had known them for like a few years. I mean, those guys are great, and I just enjoy every second I get to talk with them. And also, you can see the family aspect just with the commits right now. I mean, every Saturday I'd go to the, or I'd go to their home games, and I'd just pick up right where I left off with all the guys. Uh, I think we're probably one of the tightest uh, classes in the country and I think that's super attractive for other people to see just how close-knit people are because that's what people want to be a part of they want to be a part of a family very cool you said you like coach Rayola and his coaching what is it about him that you wanted to be coached by him yeah I just really love the style that he coaches with uh when I first had that official visit Ethan Piper was my player host and I kind of asked him like hey what do you think of coach Rayola and the first thing he, he told me was he's a father figure. And just so how he takes those guys under his wing. And he really preaches that he wants his offensive line room to be a family. And how he wants their guys to always be hanging out with each other. And uh, Coach Rayola also talks about how he wants his guys to see him as just a regular guy, too. He doesn't want them just to see him as a coach. He wants to see him as just a normal guy, too. So you had some offers from some pretty impressive schools with high, high academic standards, not easy to get into whether you're playing football or not. How important is the academic aspect to you and why is it important to you? Yeah, that, that's super important to me because it sets up my future. Uh, football only lasts a certain amount of time for everybody, no matter what level you play to. And so... As long as I can just keep my academics uh, and keep working hard in the classroom, that'll translate over onto the football field. Uh, and that's just kind of how I take everything. I just want to do everything to the best of my ability. And so that's why I work super hard in the classroom. So your dad played college football at South Dakota, right? Was an All-American. How yep. big of a role did he play in who you became as a football player? He played a massive role in who I am today. I mean, not the football player on mm -hmm. the field, but just the person I am today. Uh, I look up to him every day. He's just a humble person uh, who had some pretty impressive accomplishments as a football player, but you wouldn't be able to tell off the field. He just carries himself super well. Um, but also he inspired me to become a college football player. He talks about all the stories off the field that he just enjoyed being a part of a football team. And so I wa really wanted to be a part of that. And so he just was a big role model for me to play football. And he also showed me what hard work it looks like. He grew up in a small town where nobody really recruited him that much. And then so he went to South Dakota and was a true freshman there. He was, I think he was bottom of the depth chart when he got there and just put his head down and worked and worked and worked until he got his starting spot. That's awesome. What a cool story. So he played defensive lineman, right? right? Yep. How did you become an offensive lineman then? Yeah, I don't know. He always tells me that I have better feet than he did. And so he <laughs> always would tell me that I'm going to be an offensive lineman just because of my feet. But, yeah, he was super quick as a defensive lineman, so I get a little bit of that from him too. So did you have any choice to, to play football? I guess it sounds like your dad probably didn't push it on you or didn't make you play it. How would you find your own love for it? Yeah, I just love football ever since I was a kid. I just love playing sports. I'm a competitive person. Um, it doesn't even have to be sports. I'm always trying to compete with people. And so I just found the love for football. I love the physicality aspect of it. I love the team aspect of it. You know, football is one of those sports where not one guy can take over the game. All 11 people matter. And if one guy screws up, well, it's not going to work out very well. And so I think that's super cool to be a part of. Very cool. So what, what are kind of your plans? You're going to finish out your uh, high school basketball season, but what are some of the goals for yourself before you get here in the summer to be able to come ready to roll? Yeah, I've already been talking with Coach Rayola about different things that I'm going to do in the off season, different drills that I'm going to be working on uh, because they want me at center, and that's a new position for me. So I'm just going to be working on that. Um, 
I just want to, like I said earlier, I want to be the best high school athlete that I can possibly be. So I'm going to work hard in basketball. And then I also throw shot and discus for track. And so that I'm looking forward to doing that as well. So uh, I, I read a, a cool story that your family and your sister came with you on your official visit. And she's going to Iowa. And even when yep. she came here to Nebraska, she said it feels like home. Can you tell us uh, that story and, and how much that meant to you to have your family feel like it was home too? Yeah, that was a really cool experience. It was the first night of our official visit. We came back to the hotel after touring campus and doing all that stuff. And we just kind of all looked at each other and knew that this was home for me. My sister smiled and just said, I can understand why you like this place so much. And she knew it was right for me because we've grown up together our whole lives together. Um, and so she knew what was right for me. And that was just, just a great feeling to have is that it's going to be home. Oh, very cool. Okay, got some fun questions for you. Let Husker fans get to know you a little bit. Who was your favorite player or athlete growing up? Growing up, I think my dad's a Cowboys fan. And so he would always tell me the stories of when they were going to win all those Super Bowl titles. And so Larry Allen was actually my favorite player growing up, just to see how strong he was, how good he was at the offensive line position. And so that's the guy that I love to watch. Awesome. What's your favorite hobby outside of football outside of football i love to fish uh, my dad does fly fishing up in northeast iowa uh, he ties flies and goes out there for seven hours on a day so I'll, sometimes i'll go up there and do that with him and then we got some great rivers around here and so i love to get out and fish so you're gonna have to find a spot to come fish in here in lincoln huh oh, i'll have to get get those sp spots found uh, that's awesome okay favorite cereal Favorite cereal? I think I'll have to go with Reese's Puffs. I love those as a kid. I still have a bowl every once in a while, but yeah, <laughs> those are great. Uh, I love it. I love it. Okay. Rank these cookies, all right, from first or from last to first chocolate chip, peanut butter, macadamia nut, or oatmeal raisin? All right. So last, macadamia nut. And then after that, I'll go peanut butter. And then oatmeal raisin is going to be the second best because my grandma makes some great oatmeal raisin cookies. And then number one chocolate chip. It's just the basic. It's always good. So I think I'll go number one chocolate chip. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right, Jake Peters, appreciate your time. Congratulations once again. Can't wait to see you here on campus in Lincoln. Appreciate you having me. Thank you. He was so fun to talk to and continues that trend of offensive linemen being great interviews, oh. right? But you love that Larry Allen answer. Love, but great pull. Larry Allen's a really <laughs> underrated football player. Love that. And any offensive lineman watching right now is like, heck yes. Nice job <laughs> by Jake Peters. That was so enjoyable to listen to him. So uh, good to have that. You know what I'm sensing? I'm sensing a Bellevue West run uh -huh, coming yeah. up here. And let's start it off. Happy to announce a new addition to the Cornhusker football team, Isaiah McMorris from Bellevue West, a whiteout uh, for that great program coach. Mike Huffman has done a wonderful job with the Thunderbirds down through the years, a perennial state playoff team, and Isaiah McMorris, now a Cornhusker. Man, I know the Husker staff is excited about him. Had offers, a ton of offers, USC, Wisconsin, Penn State, Oklahoma, Missouri, Minnesota, Iowa, some of those offers that he had. His junior season stats, Unbelievable. He had a state record 90 catches for 1,297 yards and 14 touchdowns. Uh, had eight games, just played in eight games last season, but had 576 yards and eight touchdowns. But, you know, you, you look at some of the list of schools that have some pretty prolific offenses that want to make Morris come be a part of it. A big get for him. And you got a chance to sit down with Coach McGuire on Isaiah McMorris. Joined by Husker wide receivers coach Garrett McGuire, another wideout to talk about here on National Signing Day. Another young man from up in Omaha, Bell West High School, has produced Isaiah McMorris. He is now a Cornhusker. You excited about Isaiah? I'm so fired up. Isaiah is going to bring a toughness and a competitiveness to us that, that we need, especially with uh, losing some of those older guys that we did. Um, but you just talk about a guy that, again, top 10 in the state in the 100 meter, uh, fits what we want to recruit. Um, with the ball in his hands is probably when he's at his best. Um, he's got some, you know, true running back like ability with the ball in his hands. You know, he grew up a running back, um, but a guy with just great change of direction, short area quickness. Uh, he gets in and out of his breaks. Um, you know, he's going to play both inside and outside for us. But, you know, I think we have a really, really good uh, role for him to play in our offense. And I'm fired up about Isaiah. 
Because he's played some running back, do you envision that maybe he could be a guy you line up in the backfield every now and then? Absolutely. You know, especially with uh, just the way teams are going to probably try to play us uh, based off last year. And, um, you know, just mix up the picture and be able to do some different things from the backfield and from the slot outside um, just to get him the ball in space. How that school, we're getting three signees out of that school today. Those guys, they're, they're, and you've got a lot of Omaha products on there. That's, that's, that's a group that kind of knows each other pretty well, I would think, starting on campus. A absolutely. The camaraderie, and then also, again, uh, I talked about some of those guys from Omaha that will be able to show them, um, or just from this state, that'll be able to show them, hey, this is the way we do things, so that the onboarding process when they get here will be uh, a little bit more sped up. Also part of an undefeated basketball team. Absolutely. He, he can play. He can play. <laughs> He's a good player. Isaiah McMorris, the latest Cornhusker. You'll like this as well. Part of an undefeated basketball team last year and he's going to try to win him another state title this year. You know, one of the things we haven't talked about much, but we, it was a big topic last year about how this coaching staff likes those multi-sport athletes. And boy, there is a ton of them in this class again uh, this season. A lot of guys that star in, on the basketball court, on, on track and field teams, and uh, there's a baseball player. I just, again, uh, those those multi-sport athletes, this staff really likes. Yep, they sure do. 29-0 and 0, Thunderbirds last year on the basketball court. I said I sensed a Bell West run. It continues. Devon Hall, another wide receiver from that proud program, is going to be a Cornhusker. Uh, terrific. His senior season was cut short, got hurt, uh, and, and that's disappointing. Not, not a, not a career-ending injury at all for Devon, but I know he was disappointed that he didn't get to play more football in his senior campaign. But this guy regarded in, by a lot of people, Jessica, because maybe a top three player in the state of Nebraska. So here you go, Devon Hall. And another guy who had a, a pretty impressive list of offers, Arkansas, Iowa, Kansas, Kansas State, Minnesota, Penn State, Tennessee, Texas A&M, Wisconsin, to name a few of those. So again, another guy that was really sought after really across the country. This Nebraska signing class this season is really, really impressive. There are loads of talent in this state. We've been hearing Damon Benning say that uh, for a couple seasons now, and certainly this coaching staff did a great job of bringing those guys here to Nebraska. Let's uh, once again hear from Coach McGuire on Devon Hall. Joined by Husker wide receivers coach Garrett McGuire, Devon Hall, the latest Cornhusker to come in today. The young man from Omaha Bell West High School, tremendous program up there. Didn't have his, the best year for them, but Devon Hall can play some football, coach. Yes, sir. You know, another guy with just a super strong support system, mom, dad, uh, little brother, you know, they're, they're there for him. And, um, you know, I'm excited to get a homegrown Husker, you know, a guy that's watched this program again, like all these guys, but, you know, we're getting a football player um, we're getting a big, strong, athletic uh, guy. You know, he's uh, top 10 in the state in the 100 meter. Um, ended up getting hurt this year, but um, just the upside he has. And, you know, he's a, he's a natural, natural receiver, um, probably 6'2". He's a, he's a big, big person um, that stretches the field vertically, but also can be, um, you know, a first and second down possession receiver with true route running ability. Has he been able to come down and be around the program a little bit more because he's so close? Absolutely, yes, sir. You know, our room did a great job recruiting him. He's very, very familiar, obviously, with Malachi and Jalen. And um, I think, honestly, one of the better things for us was just he got to see those guys have some success this year, and um, he wanted to be a part of it. Devon Hall, the newest Cornhusker young man from Bell West High School up in Omaha. We, that's a, been a good school for the Huskers in this recruiting class, but he's the latest to come in today. We talked about those multi-sport guys. He's got a high jump of 6'10". So, I mean, this is a guy that's got kind of explosion to him. He's not as fast as some of the other ones. He'll, he'll argue that, I'm sure, because I think he finished in the top eight in the 100 meters. One last fall, by, by the way, by Jalen Lloyd. So, there's going to be a lot. There's going to be a little smack talk in some of the locker rooms. Some of these guys from that Omaha area that have competed against each other, now they're going to be teammates. I think it's fun. Yeah, I, I think it's really fun. And, and again, these kids that grew up competing against each other in multiple sports. You yes. know, how many times have they battled it out, not just on the football field, but basketball court? They're uh, competing against each other on the state track and field championships so um, it's it's neat to gonna it's gonna be neat to see those guys come together and be teammates you know it's it's pretty crazy when you look at just the re the commitment list of Nebraska and, and I was talking to Caleb Benning about this but eight of the top 12 recruits from the state of Nebraska five of the top six top four all coming here to Nebraska.
Great, impressive. All right, we're hitting toward the top of the hour, so let's do a, a quick reset here. We've announced 16 that have now officially been signed for the Cornhuskers. We do expect the head coach to join us sometime in the next hour. Looking forward to having him in here to get his thoughts. But the, uh, the signings, the national letters continue to pile in. We talked about the Bell West run. It continues. We got another quarterback to talk about. Daniel Kalen is in for the Big Red. The six foot three, 210 pound uh, quarterback, a top 11, elite 11 quarterback for the Cornhuskers. And this guy ended up being, you could have called him an assistant recruiting coordinator. Right. He was big, right? Jessica, after he committed to Nebraska, he worked his tail off to help the Huskers get some more names. He really did. It was neat to see kind of those relationships really come to fruition throughout since he committed and, and the guys that he built those relationships with and, and the group chats you hear when doing these interviews a lot of them will bring up the the group chat the group text thread that they have and he is a big part of that but yeah I was, I was gonna ask him about uh, hey uh, whenever football's done you're gonna join a recruiting to staff somewhere because he certainly uh, was a big vocal part of that and, and I know he and Carter Nelson built a really neat relationship but uh, again, here's another one of those Nebraska kids that uh, you know grew up watching this program and, and uh, loving this program. And you got a chance to talk with Coach Satterfield about Daniel Kalen. Joined now by Husker Offensive Coordinator Marcus Satterfield. We're going to talk some quarterbacks. The Huskers have a new quarterback in this class. Daniel Kalen from Bellevue West High School is now a Cornhusker. Coach, this is a guy that's been committed quite a while. He did a pretty good job recruiting for us, too, after he made the commitment here. Yeah, he's a, you know, an Omaha kid who's grown up wanting to be a Cornhusker, and I think that's really important when you match a guy that wants to be here and wants to be part of this organization with his talents. I think he's super talented. He's got great size, uh, great arm strength, uh, very accurate with the football. And, you know, he's not, he's not going to kill you with quarterback runs, but he's athletic enough, like we say, to – to make you pay when you don't honor, you know, proper rush lanes. He can pull it down and create off schedule plays. And uh, we're excited about him. He did a really nice job throughout the process of, you know, getting this class put together really in a lot of ways and recruiting a lot of these guys uh, to jump on board. So we're excited about Danny. I think he's got a, a tremendous upside. He's gonna have a great career here. He went last summer to some of those super camps and he held his own, didn't he, in those things? He did some of the Elite 11 stuff. He was one of the top performers in uh, the Elite 11, which, you know, in, in college, uh, recruiting quarterbacks that's a that's a huge deal just to get invited uh, to go out west and to perform like he did was uh, really impressive and really says a lot about who he is as a player you probably watched a lot of Bellevue West tape with the two wide receivers and <laughs> now Daniel no doubt <laughs> and uh, they're fun to watch and we when we first got here I remember turning them on you know junior tape and they were impressive and then to carry that through this season it's been been fun to watch them kind of mature and and develop as a couple of years have gone by so there he is, the latest Cornhusker to commit, sign his national letter of intent, Daniel Kalen, quarterback from Bellevue West up in Omaha. I think when you when you meet Daniel, you're a little surprised. He's six, he's tall, six foot three. Yeah, he he's is. got some length to him. And you see him you saw him on the sideline a lot in the fall. He was. I mean, and, and a lot of those Nebraska kids were here quite a bit, but you saw a picture of them on sign. He's like, man, he's big. Yeah, he's he's a big guy. And um, yeah, you see it right there, 6'3", 210. Uh, so, yeah, that's a that's a good-sized quarterback right there. Sure is. And just got a chance to talk to Daniel Kalen. And we welcome in the quarterback out of Bellevue West, Daniel Kalen. Daniel, thanks so much for being here. Congratulations. Officially a Husker. How does it feel that signing day is here, not just for yourself, but a lot of these guys that you helped recruit to come be a Husker? Yeah, it feels incredible. Um, it's been a long time coming for sure. Um, definitely an exciting day, and um, yeah, like you said, not only me, but a lot of a lot of great athletes that are signing today, and I can't wait to get up in Lincoln with those guys. Okay, so so take me through your recruiting process. I know you had a, a lot of interest, a lot of schools, and and were committed, and then here comes Coach Rule and company. What what was it about that cell? What was it about those relationships that you built that you knew that this was the spot for you? Yeah, I think right away when Coach Rule, um, you know, was named the head coach, he had reached out to me and we were able to talk. Um, and then I was able to get up on campus pretty quickly and meet Coach Satterfield, Coach DeMichael, connect with Coach Rule even more. Um, so really just from the start, I feel like I had a good relationship with them and I really kind of connected with them well. Um, obviously, you know, there are other schools that I liked as well and I, I went through the recruiting process. Um, but in the end, I do feel like I definitely made the right decision. It's where I wanted to be um, and, and I can't wait to be up there. So being a Nebraska kid, how did that feel when that offer, that first offer came in and to be a Husker? 
Yeah, when I when I first got the offer, um, it wasn't from this staff, but um, it, it was definitely a surreal feeling. Um, it's something I've been working towards and something I wanted for a long time. So um, to hear that I had offered to the University of Nebraska was crazy. Um, and then to finally commit, you know, after a few years, a few more years down the road from the offer, um, it just means the world to me. And I can't wait to start getting to work. But um, I think everyone, especially people that have grown up in this state, knows what knows what Husker football means around here. And so I don't take that lightly. And, and it definitely means a lot. So then immediately once you commit, you go to work helping to recruit your fellow uh, fellow guys in this class. Why was that important from you from the start to get involved in that? Yeah, you know, I think especially in football, it's a team sport, um, and, and especially at the quarterback position, um, you know, I need guys to protect me. I need guys to throw the ball to. You need a good defense. So uh, I just think the better guys I have around me, um, you know, the better the team's obviously going to be. And so I want to be in, as active as I possibly could in recruiting and um, not only to get talented guys around me, but also to start developing relationships um, with my future teammates. So um, that was definitely important to me, and, and it, it was also a lot of fun as well. So you're building relationships, not just giving a sell, but what was your sell to come play with you and be a Husker and play at Nebraska with you? It was really more just trying to sell uh, what Nebraska football has to offer, um, what, what it would look like if, if this place, um, you know, was, was really, really successful like it has been in the past and, and what the coaching staff, um, I believe, that they can do. So um, that's really what all I did. I tried to, you know, be genuine, be myself. Um, you know, I, I think just being genuine and developing those relationships is, is really what mattered. Okay, so you have a couple of teammates coming with you from Bellevue West. Let's talk about them individually. First of all, give us your perspective of Dave Vaughn for Husker fans listening in that, that might not have seen you guys play. What's he like? What can we expect from him? Yeah, the, the funny thing about the, you know, the two guys above you West, and obviously we'll start with Dave Vaughn, is, is they, have, they play the same position, but they, play, they have different play styles. So, um, you know, Dave Vaughn's more of the – straight line speed, bigger physical receiver, you know, get up and, and, and high point a ball. Um, he's going to make a lot of plays. He even played defense for us this year as well. So um, just a dude that's going to come in, and he's been a Husker fan. He's growing up around here, and so he's just going to work hard, and um, he's definitely an electric type of player. Um, so that, that's where you're getting in, Dave on. All right, now tell us about Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah. Isaiah is someone I've known for um, a little less longer than, than Dave on, but um, he's – like I said, on the different kind of side of it, he's um, he can still go deep. He can still take the top off the defense, but he's more just get the ball in his hands. He's going to make plays. Um, you know, he's he's one of those players that you can just throw a hitch and he's going to take it to the house and, and make you look a lot better than you are. So um, he's he's going to be a great player. Also works really hard, and we have a good relationship. Okay, so I want you to take me back, little Daniel. When did he first start playing quarterback? Why did you fall in love with the position? And and where did the dream come to play college football? Yeah, I, I've been playing quarterback, or not quarterback, I've been playing football for as long as I can remember. Um, the first team I actually remember playing for is when, when I was in kindergarten, and Grant Winstrom was actually my coach in Springfield, Missouri. Um, but growing up until about sixth grade, I always um, loved receiver. I loved playing receiver. Um, I'm a Giants fan because I grew up being a, a big Victor Cruz and Odell Beckham Jr. fan. But um, I remember it was summer going into – or spring of sixth grade, my mom saw an ad for a, um, a quarterback coach, like a quarterback lesson, and I went. And really just from that point on, I've been playing quarterback, and I fell in love with the position. So um, I've been playing that ever since. Um, and it's, it's really just um, a huge priority in my life is, is playing football and being a quarterback. And it definitely means even more um, to play. No, I'll be playing at the University of Nebraska. What did you love about the position then when you, when you first went to that first lesson? And, and what'd you fall in love, why'd you fall in love with it? I just think I think there was a lot more detail and, and, and cerebral parts of the game than I realized at that at that point in my career. Um, you know, especially in today's game, so much of playing quarterback is is you know uh, above the shoulders. How how quickly can you process information? How well can you know the plays and and all all the, all the things that come with that? So I think that's really um, what kind of sold the position to me and why I fell in love with it. Um, I think a big piece of it as well is the leadership portion. Um, you know, I have the ball in my hands at all times. I'm the person that the team's going to look to um, in good and bad times. And so I think that's also a, a big piece of why I love playing quarterback. So what are the, what's next for you? What are the goals? You're going to be here early, right? Um, what, what goes into that? What, what do you need to do to continue to develop and, and maybe be able to contribute as a, as a freshman? 
yeah, you know, especially this next um, little over a month. But I didn't take a lot of time off after the season. Um, you know, I, I want to get right back into working hard and getting ready to, to be up in Lincoln. So it's really just lifting, developing my speed, getting bigger, faster, stronger. Uh, I have some great quarterback coaches, uh, Coach Taglin that I work with in Omaha and Coach Hoover in Kansas City that I'm going to be throwing with over the next month. Um, and, and really just doing what I've, what I've always done, you know. And the, at the end of the day, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, you just got to stay true to your training of, of what's got you here and just continuing to grind and work hard. Um, and then, you know, just when I get to campus, it's really just the same thing, just working as hard as possible, learning the playbook, being in the facility as much as I can. Um, and at the end of the day, it's always a competition. If, I'm, if I end up getting on the field, you know, it's obviously what I want. But um, at the end of the day, I'm just going to compete and work as hard as I can and, and develop as – Develop into the best quarterback that I can be. You've talked about the cerebral part of it. Do you, does it excite you diving into the playbook, getting to know that, study that, all the ins and outs of all that? Yeah, that's always super exciting. Uh, I remember when I first got to Bellevue West, I was super excited when we first started installing plays. And so um, I'm definitely excited. I know it's a way more complex offense than, than at the high school rep level for sure. Um, and, and that's definitely exciting. Um, you know, I'm excited to just really just just dive in fully um, and start learning the playbook. Okay, uh, last serious question I got for you. How, you you spent a lot of time getting to know this group. How much do you like this signing class? This this signing class that signed on the dotted line today to come to Nebraska. Yeah, I love those guys. Um, you know, like you said, I, I tried to help as much as I could with recruiting, and it really has brought me close to a lot of those dudes. Um, especially some of the local guys that I've already known for a while, like Donovan Jones, Carter Nelson, Grant Bricks, um, and Keelan Smith, and then the guys that are out of state, like Ja'Cory, um, Gibson Pyle, you have Jake Peters, and I can name them all. I can keep going, but it's just a great group of guys, and I just can't wait to, to be around them every day and start getting to work. Okay, got some fun questions for you. Let Husker fans get to know you a little bit. You, you kind of mentioned this. I'm all not right. sure if it'll be the same answer, but who was your favorite player or athlete growing up? Yeah, I, I would say probably Odell, mm -hmm. Odell Beckham Jr. Um, I used to, I actually had a perm. Um, I had a perm because I wanted my hair to look like his. So, um, but I would say first was Victor Cruz because I actually read his, um, his book when I was in third grade. And I, I remember used to, I used to do the salsa when I was scoring and flag football. But um, yeah, no, I, it's, it's probably those two guys because I've been a Giants fan ever since I read that book. That's awesome. Do you have a picture of the perm days? Uh, I, I have a video. You can actually go on my Instagram. It's, uh, I unarchived I un it. It's like the first Instagram post on my page. It's a video of like me doing these fake water bottle flips, and you can see the perm. And I, I definitely have some photos as well, but um, <laughs> Yeah, we got some evidence of the, the perm days. We might have to bust those out. Okay, what's your favorite yep. hobby outside of football? Hobby outside of football? Um, I would probably say I like I like playing cards a lot. I love really playing any other sport, so I like playing pickup basketball or pickleball or whatever it is. Um, and then I honestly love to travel and be in nature. I'd probably say those things are... Um, some of the biggest things I like to do outside of football, but um, I definitely keep football a pretty big priority in my life. So, you got a favorite card game? You a pitch guy? Um, I, yep, pitch is definitely up there. Um, dummy rummy. I play cribbage, um, golf. There's there's a lot of games. I, I can really play any card game and, and have a good time. I've heard two of those four. Okay, uh, favorite cereal? Favorite cereal? Um, I would probably say either, I'm pretty basic, probably Honey Nut Cheerios and um, Lucky Charms. Love it, love it. Okay, I want you to rank these cookies, all right, from one through okay. four. Chocolate chip, peanut butter, oatmeal raisin, macadamia nut. All right, oatmeal raisin definitely lasts. <laughs> uh, and I'll probably do peanut butter. And then pff, I think it's almost a tie with chocolate chip and macadamia nut. I, I feel like macadamia nut cookies are definitely underrated. Okay, I love it. And I also love that you have oatmeal raisin last because that's been a big debate here on our Huskers radio network. I'm sure you know Damon Benning. He's a big oatmeal raisin guy. I hate oatmeal raisin, so I'm glad you're on team dislike oatmeal raisin. Uh, Daniel, thank yep. you so yep. much for your time. Appreciate it. Congratulations again. Yep, I appreciate it. Thank you.
Uh, it was fun getting to chat with him. And again, just such a huge part of, of uh, helping bring this class together uh, from the start. And uh, how about his perm? His I need perm. a picture. I, well, he, I was trying to pull it up. I, I meant to try to get it to, to throw it up here on screen because he said he, he has some pictures in, in a video on Instagram. But you ever have a perm, Greg? No, 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 uh, <laughs> no. Uh, I, I can't remember when I had hair, so it's been a while. <laughs> but I need a picture of that perm at some point in time. Okay, I'll try to find it. All right, well, you need guys to block for quarterbacks, right? we got another offensive lineman to tell you all about. <laughs> this kid's tape is amazing. Gibson Pyle is now a Cornhusker from Houston, Texas. Klein Kane High School down there. One of the top offensive line recruits, not only in the state of Texas, but in the entire country. Uh, this was a big-time get when Nebraska got his commitment months ago. Gibson Pyle, again, this tape is just funny to watch. He's just absolutely pushing guys into the ground. Yeah, selected for the 2024 All-American Bowl. He had uh, 25 offers, including Colorado, Duke, Kansas, Kansas State, Missouri, Ole Miss, USC, and uh, you really enjoyed his film. Uh, another guy that really enjoyed his film is uh, Coach Raiola, who uh, gave us a perspective on, on what we're getting out of Gibson Pyle. Joined by Husker offensive line coach Donovan Raiola. The Huskers have another offensive lineman to add to this class, and this is a good one. Gibson Powell from the state of Texas. Tell us about Gibson. Yeah, so Gibson was our uh, first commit uh, as far as the offensive line goes this, this uh, last last spring. And, uh, you know, he's a big physical Mahler type player. Um, you know, he uh, is going to work to finish his blocks and, um, just, you know, another high character young man. Excited to get to work with him. Another 300 pounder. I just I don't remember that happening very much coming kids out of high school, but Gibson right at that 300 pound. I mean, they're already almost college ready when they get here in some ways. Yeah, no, that's exciting. You know, it, it'll be exciting. He'll he'll get here in January, so it'll be fun to get to work with him. What was it? What was he like to get to develop the relationship with for you? Oh, he's great. He's a great young man, um, high character, great family. So it's, it was it was fun to get get to know him and his family, and um, you know, I'm excited to, that to get him here. I'm loving this tape. He's just mauling guys out there. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, folks, the newest Cornhusker, Gibson Pyle from Houston, Texas. Just love that tape, and uh, I, I can't get enough of that stuff. And I know when you're at the high school level, if you are a Division One offensive lineman, you probably should dominate. Boy, that you, it just screams at you when you watch that tape there. We're going to stay in Texas, Jessica, for the next signee that is now on the books, officially a Cornhusker, Roger Gra Gradney, who is a DB also from that state of Texas, six foot 205 pounder might be a safety i mean you know how coop likes to work those guys at different spots but uh he, he's also got an exciting tape to watch this was one of the first guys to commit to this class way back in february he was the first commit of the 2024 class i know he takes a, a lot of pride in that you know, he talked a, a lot about being from a small town and you know maybe being under recruited that nebraska was his first really big offer and it really meant a lot to him and i know he's uh he takes a lot of pride in the fact that he was the first commit of this class he's got a great personality I didn't get a chance to chat with him on camera, but hopefully we'll be able to do that in, in the coming weeks and we can bring it for you here. But he was a kick returner as well and had four kick returns for touchdowns. He scored touchdowns in four different ways. So again, a, a, an athlete that they're going to be able to figure out where he fits best because he did it all for his uh, high school. So uh, you got a chance to chat with Tony White, the defensive coordinator, about Roger, Roger Gradney. Well, the Husker defensive coordinator, Coach White, the Huskers go to the state of Texas to find another young man to add to the roster, Roger Gradney, who uh, looks like he could be a pretty good safety for this team. Your thoughts? Tell you what, you said it, man. Texas, we're going to be going back there frequently to find guys like Roger. You know, he is a guy who uh, the first thing that jumps out at you is his just, I mean, he's so versatile. I mean, he's in the backfield. He's playing Wildcat quarterback. He's returning kicks and punts. He's at DBs, at corners, at safety. Here he's that edge rusher, rushing the passer. I mean, there's a lot of things this this young man can do, and and uh, it was it was a great job by the by the guys evaluating him and and just truly being about the profile. You know, a guy who has all the traits you want: physicality, athleticism, speed, size, range, and then uh, get him into the system, get him with Corey Christian, let him develop, and you got a player who can do a lot of things. Coach, I like the fact that he committed quite a while ago and just stayed firm with that commitment to be a Cornhusker. Yeah. I tell you what, that that's the that's the again great job with the plan, great job of uh, 
uh, a great family support system around him. Um, he just wants to be a Cornhusker, and we, we want him to be a Cornhusker. So. Roger Gradney, the latest addition to the Husker defensive backfield, young man from the state of Texas. You know, Jessica, we talked about a lot of offensive linemen in this class. We've only gotten three of them officially in the fold yet, but a lot of DBs in this class as well. And we are set to tell you about another one. We talked about the mountain time zone hitting just a, an hour or so ago that these guys could send their letters in. They're starting to trickle in from out there. One from the Denver area, Littleton, Colorado. Rex Guthrie could be a corn husker. Uh, selected a captain this past year for his high school, Heritage High School, out there in the Denver area. And another guy that I know this group is excited about. I uh, love this story. You're going to hear from Rex coming up. But uh, another kid that came to camp was discovered at camp. Marcus Satterfield went out to his high school and said, hey, maybe you, you should come to camp. And so he's really, really fast, as you can see here. But his numbers are, are crazy. 115 tackles, six and a half tackles for loss, three interceptions. But was just uh, a little under recruited, but came to camp. And, and this the staff again has said that they want to find that talent at camp and so uh, you know th that offer really meant a lot to him so uh, and again we, we're gonna hear from Tony White on Rex Guthrie. Husker defensive coordinator coach White with us here Huskers have gotten another defensive back Rex Guthrie from Littleton Colorado is going to be a corn Husker tell us about Rex. I tell you what Rex uh, he was a guy who um, under recruited he was a guy who truly, you talk about the process with Coach Rule and, and, and the staff in terms of finding those guys, developmental guys. He came to camp and, I mean, ran, I think, a 4-5, four, 4-4 four, four on some clocks. So everybody in line was like, hey, who is this guy? And then you put him through drills and you got a chance to see the change of direction. You saw how fluid he was with his hips. And then you're saying, hey, man, I need to watch the film on this guy. And sure enough, you see a guy again whose versatility jumps out on the film. I mean, he can run, he can hit, uh, great family, uh, great student, uh, multi-positional guy, and uh, love love to just have him in the defense and see what he grows into. You know, track athlete. You kind of you guys kind of like those guys who can show it off in different sports. Hey, man, athletes, man, you gotta have athletes when you run around in the Big Ten, especially with the new additions there. You're gonna have to. You know, in this defense, you're going to have to be able to play man, zone, match up with guys, blitz off the edge, play the run. So another good addition to the DB core. No doubt. Rex Guthrie, the newest Husker from Littleton, Colorado. Two defensive backs, back-to-back, -back, Randy Correct. and Guthrie. Jessica had a chance to talk with Rex from Littleton, Colorado. We welcome in the safety out of Littleton, Colorado, Rex Guthrie Heritage High School out there in Littleton. Rex, thanks for joining us. Congratulations. How does it feel to officially be a Husker? I'm so excited to go out in January and just start the process with the team, the coaches, all that. I'm just super pumped. Yep. That's what I've worked for for the past four years, so it's all coming together, yep. That's awesome. Well, I want to get into all of your recruiting journey, all of that. But before that, how about that Nebraska flag you got hanging in the background? Yep. Mm -hmm. Got to represent. <laughs> Go ahead. That's awesome. Very cool. Well, you committed back in June. You came to a camp here. Take me through the decision that you decided to come to that camp, and what were your what initially kind of was your hope coming into that? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, up until that point. We had coaches coming in through our school just to talk to recruits, and Coach Satterfield came in one day, and I had known really not much about Nebraska before then. They weren't really on my radar, radar. and then Coach Satterfield told me about their camp and how they take it really seriously, and if you ball out, then obviously you'll get what you deserve. So I, I came out and tried my best, worked hard, and got that offer, yeah. You know, as a, as a high school player that maybe didn't get the recognition you deserved or, or the recruitment that you deserved, to be able to have that kind of opportunity where you can come to camp and they will actually, they put a lot of stock in that. What does that mean to you? It means everything that uh, coaches take camp seriously because I feel like some other schools, you know, kind of overlook camp. It's just a way to make money, I guess, but not Nebraska and Coach Rule. They, they really took it seriously and uh, saw me for the player I am, not just, you know, the, the rankings and all that kind of stuff. That's awesome. So you came to camp and you ran really fast. I think you, you jumped high. You, you did everything you were supposed to do. Uh, how did you feel like you did when you were going through it? Did you feel like, okay, I, I'm doing something good here? Yeah, for sure. I knew 
obviously what I was capable of. So it was, it was just another day, to be honest. Yeah, I just did what I had trained for and performed. So it, it wasn't really anything out of the ordinary yet. So after that camp, you get the offer. The Once you hear those words officially, like, hey, we want to offer you a scholarship, how did that feel? What was that moment like? It was pretty life-changing just to finally, you know, feel that my all, all this work I've put in means something and to, to go play Power 5 football, you know, special for sure. So you could have waited it out, kind of seen how your, your senior year unfolded. What made you decide to commit right then in June? Uh, the coaching staff, the environment, just everything about it was perfect fit for me. And I came on my official visit the week after, and that really sold me on everything. Yeah, I committed that weekend. So you got to come. You said you didn't know much about Nebraska football, but you came to a couple game days, right? What did you think of the atmosphere when you were here in Lincoln? Incredible. Really cool, yeah. It was obviously sell out every game, so that's cool to see. I came to the Iowa game, which was really cold. That was, that was cool to see the cold for sure. Uh, you were also injured, right? How's that going? How you feeling? How's the rehab going? Good. I'm, I'm starting to get moving again, running, which is, is great. It was definitely a setback, but, you know, nothing that will stop me. It's awesome. What's your game like? Tell us, tell us what you're like out there on a football field. I like to play physical and, and fast, and that's, that's really about it. I... As a DB, obviously, some DBs, you know, aren't, aren't great tacklers or don't like to come up. But that's really what I love the most is tackling people and, and coming up quick. Physical and fast. Those are two words you hear a lot about this Tony White defense. How did you like what you saw out of, out of the defense, the black shirts throughout all last season? Yeah, I love the three-three-five and what they do. And obviously the physicality that they played with. And they took huge strides, obviously, from the year before to this year. So I can't wait to come work and, and play for this defense. Why do you think you were overlooked? You had the numbers, obviously. I know you're a track star and, and competed in baseball, too. But why do you think football-wise you were overlooked on the recruiting trail? It's a good question. I, I think it's partly Colorado football doesn't get, you know, the attention it deserves. We, we have some great players in the state, and I think a lot of them get overlooked. But obviously, like in my case, camp is a great way to go get the, the attention you deserve from schools, from bigger schools. How much more appreciative does that make you of this Nebraska coaching staff, this program that they saw past all that, that they didn't put much stock in that, and, and they did want to give you a shot? It means everything. It was one of, obviously, the main reasons I committed because the coaching staff saw me for the player I am and looked past all that other stuff that doesn't really matter once you come and play because once you get there, everyone's, you know, at the same level. Everyone's trying to compete for a spot. Evan Cooper, how is that? How have you liked the relationship that you've been able to build with him? What do you like about his coaching style? I love him both as a person and a coach. Obviously, he's a great Dude, I loved him from the second I started working with him at the camp because I, I worked with him basically the whole time at the camp. So that was great to meet him. And I, I can't wait to come play DB for him. Yeah, I'm super excited. You know, we saw freshmen all over the field, uh, especially for the defense. How motivating is that knowing that, hey, if, if you come in and do things right, if you're practicing how you're supposed to, you're going to get a shot to play right away? Yeah, it makes me super excited just to come and work. I just want to work, yep. What, what, how are you going to approach what goes into these next few months and especially being able to come early? Um, what, what, what does that look like for you? How do you approach these next few months? Um, I'm just going to keep working and control, control what I can control in my life and, and do everything I can to be the best athlete and person I can. And then once I get there, obviously it'll be nice to kind of take some weight off myself and let them obviously control eating, strength, all that kind of stuff so uh, I'm super excited and that'll help a lot with my recovery my PT so I'm excited about that part too. What went into your decision to come in January to enroll early? I had always wanted to come early because I feel like the second semester of high school most kids most football players I don't really know what you're getting out of it so to come and get in a college program early is super beneficial.
Very cool. All right, I got some fun questions for you here to close out. Okay. Let Husker fans get to know you a little bit. Who was your favorite player or athlete growing up? I would say John Lynch. I love his physicality and style of play. Awesome. Okay, what's your favorite hobby outside of football? I would say that's a good question. Um, maybe skiing. Um, I like skiing, being from Colorado. Of yeah. course, you got to, right? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Do you snowboard at all or just ski? Just ski. Never snowboarded yet. Okay, I'm not so, a big okay. fan of snowboarders. <laughs> <laughs> so Spotify wrapped, you know, breaking down your, I don't know if you're a Spotify guy or not, but who would be your top artist of 2023? Um, I think it was Future, Moneybag Yo, Youngboy, Drake. And then, I don't know, I'd have to check. I forgot the fifth one. All right. Those four, for sure, yeah. What's your favorite cereal? Cereal. Mm. Probably Frosted Flakes. Frosted Flakes. Tony the Tiger, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last one for you. Rank these cookies. Fourth okay. being the worst, first being the best. Chocolate chip, peanut butter, Oatmeal raisin, macadamia nut. I'm going to go four peanut butter, three oatmeal raisin, two chocolate chip, and one macadamia. Wow, I like it. That's yeah. different. Uh, Big macadamia nut guy, I, huh? I love him. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you here in Lincoln here in a couple weeks. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Oh, that was fun. That was fun. There's your Frosted Flakes guy, Greg. Love the Frosted Flakes. The John Lynch was great. Terrific player. Broncos now the GM of maybe the best football team in the NFL, right? San Francisco. So love that answer as well from him. I feel like staying in Colorado for a while. Yeah. You okay with that? I am. We have yeah. another one to announce. Another offensive lineman, another newest member to the pipeline, right? Landon Davidson from Broomfield, Colorado, is now a Cornhusker, the 6'4". 310 pounder is going to be a corn husker sent his national letter of intent in just moments ago landon a husker and he was a wrestler too so uh we like those wrestlers right around here that that uh, transferred and played on the football field i asked jeremiah searles our resident offensive lineman about uh, i sent him his film and asked him about him he said i really like his ability to finish in space he shows good athleticism on the move and i, I think you can see that i mean his his athleticism and and being that wrestling background so um big get here and, and let's hear what coach triola has to say about landon davidson Joined by Husker offensive line coach Donovan Riola. We have a new Husker to talk about, Landon Davidson, a big lineman from the state of Colorado. What can you tell me about Landon? Yeah, Landon, uh, he was a summer camp guy. Uh, he came in and, you know, he performed well. Big physical, um, explosive young man. Um, it's going to be fun fun to develop him and, and get him going and, and get him here. 6'4", 310 coach, already is a high school player. Yeah, he's uh, he's big and physical. He's a strong young man. Um, you know, he loves the weight room. He loves working out. Uh, he's actually uh, wrestling this this winter. So, uh, you know, those guys you know translate well to the uh, lineman position. So. Do you like that guys that wrestle and play football? Yeah, it definitely uh, helps. You know, teach them leverage and balance and those those types of things. So that's good. With that size, and it looks like primarily in high school he's lining up as a tackle. Is that what you envision him? Um, no, I think I, I see him more as an interior guy. Um, you know, um, you know, either guard or, or center. You know, so we'll see we'll see how it goes when he gets here. But uh, definitely excited about him. Good high school program out there in the Denver area. So Landon Davidson from Broomfield, Colorado, the newest Cornhusker. Sure is a good program as a junior, so not this past fall, the fall before. They went 14-0. and So, again, a guy that was a part of a state championship team out there. And you know, Nebraska, that's a big area. It's a border state. you got to try to get in that Denver area. And, you know, you get Guthrie out, out from Colorado. Now you get Landon Davidson. Just got a chance to catch up with the big O lineman from the Denver Metroplex. We now welcome in the offensive lineman out of Broomsville, Colorado, Landon Davidson. Landon, congratulations. Signing day is finally here. How does it feel to officially be a Husker? Uh, it is kind of a crazy, it's just it's a crazy moment for me and my family, um, you know, through the whole recruiting process and finally finding my new home 
and getting it in paper is just really exciting to me. Why did this feel like home for you? You know, you're from Colorado, and I read somewhere where you were initially wanted to maybe stay closer to home in Colorado, but mm -hmm. Nebraska just felt like home. Why was that? Um, so, yeah, through my entire recruiting process, I was planning on staying in Colorado. And it's funny because I went on the official visit, and then I come home, and I could not stop thinking about Nebraska. Huh. Um, the way the coaches and players interacted with each other had such a family feel, and you know, it, it already felt like a family I was a part of. So ultimately, that's why I chose Nebraska. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you have a fun recruiting story, right? A, a fun dinner mm -hmm. story, right? Can you tell us about that? Oh, about my about my two tomahawks. Yeah, yeah. You, you um, went out for a steak dinner, right? Yeah. So we got we got to Misty Steakhouse, and Coach Rule comes up to me. He's like, "Landon, you're eating two tomahawk steaks." And I was like, "All right." So we we ordered the two tomahawk steaks, and you know, I, I destroyed those things. Probably the best steak I've ever had, and it was nine on the bone after, and it was it was a great dinner. Were you feeling uh, pretty good after, or, or were you pretty stuffed? Um, right, like. I, I was doing pretty good because later that night, around like 12, I think, um, we went and got some canes. So I, I still had some room in the tank. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Was Coach Roll pretty impressed that you were able to put them both down? Oh, yeah. Everyone was kind of surprised. But, you know, I as a lineman, I love eating, so it works out. It sounds like, too, you kind of accept a challenge, whatever the challenge might be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never, never backing down. <laughs> oh, that's that's an incredible, incredible story. Well, how about Coach Raiola and getting to know him? What did you like about him, and, and why did you want to go, come play for him? Um, so just getting to meet him like at the camp first approach. I really loved his coaching style. Um, he seems like a very, you know, very calm-headed, and he knows he knows a lot. He knows the the techniques, the uh, and. Um, Working with me and just as much as he's been, like he's even working with me right now when I'm still in high school, um, just sending me the playbooks and breaking down my film with me. And I feel like I'm going to connect with him very well once I get up there. You know, I, I noticed too on, on social media, you and, and some of the other offensive linemen in this class seem to be interacting. And, and we've heard this past year just how close the, the group is, the pipeline. Mm -hmm. What is that relationship like with some of the other fellow offensive linemen? How close have you guys already become just the recruits in this class? Oh, um, it's it's pretty. Uh, we we have a text group chat, and then we've also been playing uh, Fortnite together, and that's been a lot of fun. How important is that to have those kinds of relationships with those fellow offensive linemen? I feel like it's extremely important, especially being an offensive lineman. You know, you have four guys to the left and right of you, and, or, you know, and those guys are your brothers. Those are in the trenches. You can go to war with them. I think being connected closely with the linemen is much more important than any other skill group on the field. Well, reading a couple of what people say about you, you're violent. You like to finish off blocks and, and mm. punish some of the defenders that are across from you. Um, describe your style. Why, why do you like being like that? Well, I guess as a lineman, you know, we don't get the fame and the glory of scoring touchdowns or, you know, whatever. But... Being able to physically dominate the other guy the entire game and watching his spirit leave, like, it's just, that, that's kind of my version of a touchdown, you know? So that's kind of why I make an effort to do that on every single play. Spoken like a true offensive lineman right there. I love it. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're also big into wrestling. How much has wrestling played into the kind of football player you became? Um, I mean, wrestling's the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, and I feel like once you have that kind of mindset, it almost makes life easier and everything else you do in life easier. And then there's also the conditioning and learning how to play. Um, what is it? I don't got the word, but it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a different kind of mentality you build in wrestling. What about the footwork too? Uh, how much has that mm -hmm. helped your feet too? Uh, you, you learn really how to play with leverage, especially with the, weight groups, you know, I'm go everyone I'm going against is 285 pounds. So learning how to play with leverage and throwing them is really important. You know, the, the big nose tackle, not Nash Hopmaker was a pretty big wrestler. Are you excited to go against him in practice? Oh, yeah. I, I'm i so excited to be thrown out there, like, with a new, like, just seeing the new skill that these guys have and just finding my groove in it. I can't wait. Are you coming in January? 
Uh, no, I'm coming in June. Okay. All right. So yeah. what goes into these next few months and so that you're going to be ready to go come when you get here in the summer? Um, I'm just going as hard as I possibly can in the weight room. And then after Christmas break, I'm going to join wrestling again. Awesome. Well, I got some fun questions for you. Uh, let Husker awesome. fans get to know you a little bit more. Who was your favorite player or athlete in sport growing up? Growing up, I loved watching J.J. Watt. Nice. Um, just what, well, uh, mainly watching the way he practices, the way he prepares. Um, I watched a lot of documentaries on that to see what I needed to do to get to the next level. What are some of those things, the biggest things you took away from that? Is to, like he he got up he got up every morning. He he never took a day off. Worked as hard as he could every single day. And just honestly perfecting his craft the best he could. That's awesome. Okay, what's your favorite cereal? Ooh, I, I'm, I'm going to have to go f Fruity Pebbles on this one. Fruity Pebbles, all right. Yeah, Fruity Pebbles. Favorite hobby outside of football? Uh, I love playing video games, uh, building computers, you know, those kind of things. Oh, you build computers? Yeah. How'd you get into that? Um... When I, I, was, I had to have been in sixth grade, I just started doing a lot of research on like how different computer parts worked and then started looking into building my own computer so that I could play games on it. And then, yeah, just kind of wow. went from there. Wow, you're going to be a, are you an engineering major? No, I'm just going into business, <laughs> but. Awesome. All right, what's yeah. your Spotify wrapped? Who's your number one artist? Um, I'm going to have to go Kanye. Kanye in this one. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, this will be a fun one for you. Um, rank these cookie flavors. So we're, we're going to trust okay. the offensive lineman's opinion on this one. All right. I got four oh, yeah. for you. Fourth being the worst, uh, first being the best. So chocolate chip, okay. peanut butter, oatmeal raisin, macadamia nut. I'm going to go chocolate chip at one because it's just such a staple. Peanut butter at two. Um, oatmeal raisin. And then, what was the last one, pecan? Macadamia nut. Macadamia nut, yeah. All right. Well, great stuff. Appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, best luck in wrestling season. And we'll look forward to seeing you here on campus come the summer. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. It's awesome. That is Landon Davidson, the offensive lineman out of Colorado. Appreciate your time. All right, Landon Davidson in the fold and in with us, the head football coach of the Cornhuskers, Matt Rule. Tomahawk steaks. You can't go wrong with that at Misty's. He put down two of those bad boys, huh? <laughs> That's what he said. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that I saw that, but uh, it's impressive if he did. Well, congratulations. This is a culmination of a lot of work from a lot of different people. Your thoughts about this group? Well, I'm, I'm just grateful uh, to all the, the players who made a decision to come here, their families. Um, you know, we honor that and we take that very seriously. You know, um, my wife and I, Julie, uh, our son Brian's coming to Nebraska next year as a freshman. And so, we understand probably more so now than ever how big of a decision that is and so when people send um their 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 sons when young men decide to place their future in our hands man we take it we take it with honor and we take that uh, very seriously so i'm excited i think it's a great group um i think uh i think uh it's been a lot of work R really grateful for our staff really grateful for the the athletic department um you know, when you can take uh, when you can take recruits to a wrestling match, you can take them to a women's basketball game. When you can be talking about our unbelievable Husker uh, volleyball team, and people all across the country are talking about it with you, it just builds excitement about being at Nebraska. So, so many people have done so much. Former players. I mean, I think it's really cool that you know six former players' sons coming to play for us. Uh, 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 one brother of a, of a current player, um, one nephew of two former players. I mean, just a lot of family ties. So it just shows, shows me that the ties run deep and that this means something. Let's start close to home. What kind of year was it in the state for kids coming out of high school? Yeah, I think it, it, was, it was really good for us scholarship-wise. I think second year in a row that we signed, you know, eight players in state. And a really, really, really strong uh, non-scholarship walk-on group and a lot of guys will play a lot of football a lot of guys will earn scholarships um, our summer camps were vital I think we did a great job on getting uh, the best players in the state to come to camp and a lot of those guys just want an opportunity and they're gonna get one 
Bell West High School is good to you this year with three of them. Yeah, three, three players for the first time, I think, uh, in a long time to have three players from one high school. You know, Coach Huffman does an amazing job. Um, really, the high school football all across the state has impressed me. And um, to, to have those three guys come here is uh, really a good thing for us. You know, we want to we wanna be really strong close to home. Two top, one of those kids from Bell West is Daniel Kalen. You get two top-notch quarterbacks in this class. Your thoughts about those two guys? Well, um, you know, we want to have a really strong quarterback room, and we want to have a quarterback room where we teach the guys, uh, you know, our way of playing football from, from preparing and studying to reading defenses. You know, we don't want it to be every year a, a different guy coming in. And so uh, to have the ability to, you know, train two young men from the ground up, uh, two excellent players, you know, Daniel's really an unbelievably quick processor, uh, sees the field, gets the ball out of his hand, great feet. I had a chance to go watch Dylan throw the ball. <clears throat> you know, I've been to a lot of pro days in the last couple of years of my time in the NFL. Don't know if I've ever seen anyone throw the ball quite as well as he can do it. So uh, a lot of talent, uh, a lot of work ahead, and I'm excited that those guys wanted to be here. Dylan is, a, a, both of them, elite 11 quarterbacks, and they're both six foot three. Those, those are pretty big-sized kids, both of them. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, uh, they're both big, powerful men. They're going to... They're going to stand strong in the pocket and not get injured, and uh, there's, there's a lot of benefits to having a big quarterback. Um, and uh, you know, I think you, you look at uh, you look at Dylan's you know size. You know, obviously with his father, you know, being a former <laughs> offensive lineman, he's got a, a lot of power in his body. And uh, the same is true for Daniel. Got long, great length. Um, you know, two really good players. Speaking of big men, this class is loaded with some guys along the offensive line and I know you talked all fall about how your numbers were down in that room you needed to get some numbers up in that offensive line room yeah um, you know you want you want to be at you know 16 you know nothing but 16 maybe 17 guys and uh, we've been able to do that and um, uh, the great thing about most of the guys that we have we've had them in camp we've been able to see them live they have the skill sets that we're looking for the attributes that we're looking for and um, you know we're, we're building that line you know the hard way we're doing it with Guys we've recruited, guys we're going to, going to de develop, and um, I really like the group. I like seeing them live in, at camp. I like seeing their movement and their explosiveness and excited to coach them. You mentioned camp. That's become pretty apparent. That's really a valuable time for you to get eyes on them, whether it's a camp here or whether it's a camp you go somewhere else and see them there. That's a big part of it, isn't it, to get that evaluation done? Yeah, I think you know when you're, when you're talking about evaluation, obviously you want good football players. You want guys who play well on tape. But they have to have certain traits, you know, height, weight, speed, movement, uh, explosiveness, change of direction. And so uh, when you can do it live, it's, uh, it's really beneficial. And um, there's also something to me about a guy that, you know, maybe has an offer and still wants to come to camp. Yeah. He's got a competitive streak. Uh, I I'm looking for that. Uh, competition is king. And, you know, somewhere along the way, sometimes I think we've, we've kind of gotten rid of that. Everyone's looking for the best situation. Like, Go make your situation the best situation and go compete. And uh, when guys come to camp, it shows me that they believe in what they can do and they do want to compete. And so I love it. I love the creativity that you and your staff did. You, you took that big semi out, took it over to, to Grant Bricks' high school and then out to go see Carter Nelson's high school as well. I think it made a pretty big impression on both communities. Well, you know, um, Sean Patton, Vince Ginta, Ryan Callahan, Keith Williams, all those guys, they, they, they're, they're really, really, really visionary and smart they have great ideas um, our, our uh, creative team Jordan Litton led by CJ Campbell Warren May those guys do an unbelievable job and so even the graphics we have out today you know video games and famous Husker plays then still a highlight film I mean the amount of work our guys do is 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 really impressive and so to be able to go out and make an impact in, in communities and where we want young men to want to stay home I think that's that's vital and um, I really, I've really uh, grown fond of the town of Ainsworth. I've loved getting to know uh, people out there, getting to know the community out there. Um, the same can be said for going out and seeing Grant and his community, um, eating at the Twisted Tail, meeting great people. Um, it's been a lot of fun for me. A shout out to my boy Tron. So um, uh, I just, uh, just really enjoyed the whole process. Carter Nelson, let, let's talk about my Ainsworth, Nebraska. I just love these kind of stories. This is a kid that's really talented, isn't he, Coach? Yeah, I mean, I think he could uh, – I went to his uh, playoff game and I sat there and I'm like, well, he could, he could probably play tailback. He could probably play wide out. He could probably play tight end. He could probably play on the defensive side of the ball. Um, so, you know, you start looking at a guy on offense that you can move around and use as a chess piece. And uh, that's our vision for him. 
Uh, we see him as a positionless player, uh, not necessarily a tight end. Not necessarily, you know, he, he can play wide out, he can play running back. Uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with him over the next couple of years. You like those kind of guys. I, uh, people that are special to me are the very first ones that commit to their class. Roger Gradney was, a, I believe, the first one that committed to this class and held it. Didn't even waver off of that, and he can play. Yeah, Roger's, um, Roger's an unbelievable young man from an unbelievable family. I've loved getting to know uh, his family and, and um, just, again, a big, powerful, explosive athlete. You know, you know, go to Houston, start heading west, you know, get out into, into sort of the rice farm, farmland, get out there to rice consolidated. And you, there's this unbelievable athlete, great football player. Um, you know, Coop and Omar and those guys found him early. Uh, we committed him. and. As you said, uh, been unbelievably loyal to us along the way. Very good. Another thing that we've kind of noticed, you've really hit South Florida a little bit. I know you got some guys on the staff that have some connections down to that Miami area, but there's some talented athletes down there, aren't there? Yeah, I, I think uh, you know the thing I love about players from from Miami is that uh, you know they've always they play the game with a, a certain joy and passion. Like they play it like it's recess, like they're just having fun playing ball. And um, as you said, to have Evan Cooper here. To have Phil Simpson here, uh, they've got such strong ties, and so we're not really doing all of Florida. We're really just kind of doing like you know Dade County, like you know just true Miami, yeah. and uh, it's been really good for us. We found some really great players from there, and uh, able to get a couple guys to change their minds here late and, and, and come to us, which is which is important. I think we have a graphic of of where this class is from across the country, and it just shows. I think it shows the power of the brand still, right? About that Nebraska football still has a, a name that you can walk in in Montana or South Florida or Texas and people know uh, we're, we're going to talk Cornhusker football right now. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, uh, um, you, you think you think about the, the impact of Nebraska football in Miami all of those years yeah. of going to the Orange Bowl and, you know, talking to, talking to people's uncles and 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 dads and coaches and them, them knowing what it means to, to when the Huskers come to town. And so, you know, we've been very strategic. You know, we want to recruit the 500-mile radius. We want to recruit Texas. We've kind of really moved into uh, Florida. And um, uh, you look, you know, you, you look at the, those areas. Those are those are big football areas, and, and it should be a, should be really a model that we follow moving forward for many years. Really good stuff there. Now, you've a handful of these guys will be here in a couple of weeks. How beneficial is that to you? And do you? Do you encourage that, or do you let it, leave it up to each individual? I think it's up to, to each individual. You know, if they want to run track, if they want to play on their high school basketball team, if, if they're not ready for college, then, then absolutely stay in high school and finish it. <clears throat> I think we'll have like 14, 15, 16 guys coming in mid-year. Those guys get a jump. You know, uh, they get a jump academically. They get a jump athletically. You know, my goal for all of these guys is not just to leave with a degree, but leave with two degrees if possible. And so, you know, if you come in and, and, and start off with 15 degree, 15 uh, credits plus six in the summer, you're 21 before you even start your freshman year and you're off and running. So it's great when it's right for you. Uh, you saw that with Cam Lenhard and Prince Will and yep. those guys last year. Um, to get this many guys in mid-year is awesome. Helps us as we grow our team and replenish the guys that we lost. Having the guys that, that could have left uh, decide to come back. Ben Scott, Bryce, Ben Hart, Isaac Gifford, Johnny Bullock. Um, it's been really a good month for us. It's almost another addition to the class, right? Getting those guys for another year. Yeah, I mean, those are NFL, those are NFL guys. Those are, those are guys that if they went into the portal, other uh, people would be begging them to come. And, you know, we're getting guys that, you know, made some form of all Big Ten that want to stay here. Um, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's our own personal portal. <laughs> And I'd rather I'd rather be involved with the Husker portal than anything else. Only one portal addition today is Bly Hill, is a guy from the FCS level that's come on up. Omar Brown, that certainly made that jump and played pretty well for you on that as well. But you don't anticipate a huge jump in the portal this year. It's not going to be part of it. You're going to look at it, but not a huge number of guys. Yeah, we'll always look at it. Uh, Bly, is a, Bly is a really cool um, story. You know, six foot three corner who can run. Dad Leeway played the NFL for the Seahawks for many years. Mom, volleyball player, so comes from great athletic stock, you know, great athletic parents, a great young man, um, you know, went to the FCS level, had a lot of success. A lot of people kind of jumped on it, and uh, we um, were lucky that he wanted to come here. So losing Quentin Newsom, we have a bunch of talented young players that are ready to fill those spots, but uh, Bly is another guy that can, you know, join in, and it, it takes a lot of guys to play great defense. I mentioned a lot of offensive linemen. It's called a lot of DBs in this class as well. Boy, the competition to get on the field is going to be pretty intense in that group, isn't it? Yeah, I think the, the great thing about our defense is, um, 
you know, uh, uh, I don't know. Sometimes I don't even know what position guys are playing. You know, they're, sometimes they're a corner, sometimes a safety. We signed a lot of safeties that we think are going to grow into 230-pound linebackers. So we want to be one of the fastest teams in the Big Ten. And uh, to do that, you have to. If you want to be fast, you have to recruit speed. I sat there, and you know, Braylon Prude ran by me at a camp, and at six foot four, ran four four two on my watch. And you know, it's hard for me not to get excited about those guys. And so um, you take that and multiply it across a lot of other guys, and uh, uh, we'll have a lot of speed and a lot of guys competing to get on the field. Well, congratulations. This is the work of a lot. Of, you mentioned a lot of them. A lot of people put efforts into this. We, we hear from you. We hear from the assistant coaches. But there are a lot of people behind the scenes that this is their full-time job to go identify talent for you. Yeah, our, our personnel staff uh, does an unbelievable job. Um, you know, we have, we have people working on this, you know, 24-7. And, um, and, and when people come here, I think the one thing that they identify with is, is whether it's Kristen, you know, talking about our nutrition, whether it's Gus talking about our player development, Corey talking about the weight room. Uh, they get a sense of a cohesive family feel when they're here. Um, the best recruiters we have are our student athletes and uh, uh, the players in the program talking about what it means to be here. So um, I'm just grateful to all those people that they have sh painted a picture for what Husker football is and what we all expect it to be in the coming years. We have, you're going to announce by the end of the day, almost 40 new additions to the rosters. A handful of them are going to be preferred walk-ons. You've now lived 12 months of this program and how big a factor is the walk-on program and has it changed your mind at all in the last 12 months? No, I mean, I, I, I the, probably one of the best players I ever coached was Hassan Reddick and he was a walk-on and he's probably the best player in the NFL right now. Yeah. Um, you know, I was a walk-on, Sat was a walk-on, Corey was a walk-on. Uh, to me, um, great players come in all different forms. They come in a lot of different ways. and. What I love about a guy who walks on is, is he loves the game so much, or in this case many times he loves the University of Nebraska so much he's willing to pay to wake up at 5.30 in the morning and work out every day. He's willing to pay to go out there and practice with no guarantees. And I, I love that. I love that grit and that determination and that toughness. What we've done is, you know, we're not going to have the same numbers moving forward. We're not going to be one of the larger rosters in college football just simply because that's been the directive, you know, from the athletic department, you know, making sure that we're in compliance with Title IX. So, well, we might not be able to be the biggest walk-on program. We, we can be one of the best, and we can, we can uh, recruit the highest caliber guys. And so we, we have players in this class who turn down scholarships at Division I schools to, to stay here and uh, be a part of this program. And, um, but I think when they come to the games and they see Phelan Sanford out there starting for us or John Bullock starting for us, they know that in this program they're going to get a fair chance. And that's all young people want. They want an opportunity to compete. And... Uh, we give it to them. And so I'm excited about that group. I'm just as excited about them as I am the scholarship guys. Fantastic. Congratulations to you and the staff. Thank you. Matt Rural with us here on National Signing Day. Our coverage will continue in just a few moments.
we welcome you back to our continuing coverage of National Signing Day. Big day for Huskers. And again, this is our coverage brought to you all morning long by Woodhouse. Greg Sharp along with Jessica Cootie. Thanks to the head coach for spending some time with us to kind of talk about the culmination of a lot of hours of work to put this class together. We, up to update everybody as we do a bit of a reset, 21 official announcements up to this point in time. We started at 7 a.m. I'm ready for number 22. You ready? I'm ready. Let's All right, it. number 22 in the class, another legacy young guy, Quinn Clark from Bozeman, Montana. His father, the late Ken Clark, was a terrific running back for the Cornhuskers. So Quinn Clark, a wide receiver, big, tall fellow, six foot five. This is another guy that I think the staff is excited about, and they kind of view him as a bit of a joystick. They could move him around a lot of different things. He is impressive. Here is the number one player in the state of Montana. So that makes Montana, Iowa, yeah. Nebraska. Uh, so, uh, yeah, an all-state wide receiver and all-state punter. He was his high school punter as well. So, uh, you know, another terrific athlete. He committed back in June. Loves this place. Not only did his uh, dad, Ken, play here, but his entire family went to Nebraska. But you got a chance to, to chat with Coach McGuire, Garrett McGuire, the wide receivers coach, about Quinn Clark. Joined again by Husker wide receivers coach Garrett McGuire, a new wide receiver in the in the can for the Corn Huskers, and it's a familiar name for NU fans. Quinn Clark, whose dad, the late Ken Clark, was a great back here for Nebraska. And you had to go to the state of Montana to go get this young man. Oh, by far my favorite home visit. By far my favorite home visit. Just uh, obviously beautiful there. Um, but you know, we're getting a special player, uh, big, long, fast. Came to camp and competed his tail off. Um, you know, obviously a legacy. So he grew up watching the Huskers. Um, he, he knows what this program's about. Um, he's a guy that he's played every position on the field for his high school. He came from a really, really good uh, program out there in Bozeman. And, um, you know, we're excited to get him. And you just talk about, again, a guy that fits what we kind of try to recruit, size, speed, um, and athleticism, and, and he has all the traits, all the characteristics to do that. Six foot five, coach. What kind of what kind of help is that for a wide receiver? Oh my gosh, he's going to be an unbelievable red zone target early. Um, he's going to allow us to win on third down, use that big frame, and, and body people up um, in, in tight spaces. Um, and you know, he he tracks ball naturally. He's got natural um, um, ball, ball skills. Very impressive player. There he is, Quinn Clark, the son of the late. Ken Clark, 6'5 player from Bozeman, Montana, the latest Cornhusker to turn in his national letter of intent. So Quinn is in, love that phrase. Again, the, the <laughs> Bozeman, Montana, beautiful country. That's one of the states I've not been to. I need to check that off my, uh, on my bucket list moving forward. Just got a chance to catch up with Quinn a couple days ago. We now welcome in Quinn Clark, the wide receiver out of Bozeman, Montana, Husker legacy and the number one recruit in the state of Montana. Quinn, thanks for joining us. Congratulations. How does it feel signing day finally here? You can officially make it official to be a Husker. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Uh, it feels great just to know that, you know, I'm locked in and I'm, I'm going to be spending the next four to five years with, you know, the recruits and the guys that are currently on the team and with that great coaching staff we got. So you committed back in June, came to camp here, right? Take me through the, the process and uh, how you landed on feeling like this was going to be the, the home spot for you. Um, so, yeah, camp, camp. I got offered at camp. And, you know, right after that, I really wanted to go on an official and, you know, see see what they have to offer. So we got that scheduled. I went end of June to that official, and I loved it. So I committed um, – and you know it's been it's been great ever since. I've just been building relationships with the coaches, relationship with the recruits, the uh, the players. So it's been great. So you got some ties to Nebraska, obviously. Your dad was a, a heck of a player here, running back, Ken Clark, and from '86 to '89. Your I guess your entire family came here. What what did, have you been told about Nebraska your entire life? Uh, I've liked them since day one. I think. There's a really old picture of me probably in like first grade with wearing a Nebraska Cornhusker jersey or like a football player outfit um, for Halloween. So I've liked them. Uh, it's kind of built, uh, I've been raised to like them. And, um, you know, I've loved the school since I was young. So it, it feels great to be going to the place that uh, a lot of my family's gone to and um, to play football there. So I read somewhere that your grandma gave you some pretty great advice during the recruiting process. Can you tell us that story? Yeah, yeah. I, I got my offer and, you know, I was kind of holding out. I was I was going to see, you know, what else came along or kind of explore my other options. But 
um, she kind of set me straight and she was like, you know, you've, you've wanted to play for them since forever. And now that you have the opportunity, why are you waiting? So, you know, that I ended up going on that official and I just committed there. Cause I mean, she was right. I, I didn't, I don't need anything else. And you know, that's the place I want to be. So, you know, again, with your ties to Nebraska and, and getting that power five offer, it's, it's every, every high school player's dream, right? What did it mean to you when that official offer came in? Uh, it meant a lot, especially the fact that um, Coach Rule had offered me uh, like halfway through camp. Uh, it just meant a lot to see what that, you know, he saw something in me and um, to be able to go play for the school my dad played for and, you know, play for that great uh, historical program. And, you know, we should be good in the next few years. And, you know, it, it's just going to go from there. Well, um, you know, the camp part of it has this coaching staff has said is going to be really important that they want to find talent throughout the camps. What, how important is that? And especially for a player like you, that you can have that opportunity to maybe be seen and, and get an offer at a camp. Yeah, absolutely. It's super important, especially like being from Montana. There's not really a lot of recruiting going on up here. It's mostly in state schools, not a lot of out of state schools look up here. So me being able to go down to camps, um, not even just Nebraska, but just camps in general to go go get seen and you know go get recruited by different bigger schools is is great. It's a great opportunity. What does that mean to you personally to be an example for those those recruits, those football players, young football players in the state of Montana that you can get an offer like Nebraska? Uh, it means a lot. I've had a, I've had a few guys from smaller schools in Montana text me and be like, "What does it take?" And I just I just tell them, you know, just work hard, go to camp, show out, and you know. You should get that oh you know what i mean um but it just means a lot to be one of the first few kids out of montana to go play power five football and yeah you were first team all-state wide receiver and first team all-state punter how did you get into punting and what do you like about being able to be the punter for your high school team um <laughs> so the punting just started uh probably freshman year i punted for varsity a little bit and, you know, it's just kind of gone from there. Um, I'm, I don't claim to be a punter, but I, I can punt a ball pretty well. But, um, uh, yeah, I, I just had a great year punting. And, man, I had a, uh, my coach set me up for success in special teams, whether that was field goals or punting. So, um, yeah, that, that's where the All-State comes from. So how, how much fun is it to get to do something different and be able to help your team in a different way like that? Uh, it's super fun, especially in like practice, not even in games, just practice, just messing around with the special teams kids and, you know, kicking long field goals or doing some weird punt stuff. It, it, it's fun. And, you know, once you get in a game, there's opportunities to fake the ball and, you know, make game winning plays while kicking a field goal or, you know, getting a return to muff a punt. You know what I mean? So it's fun. It, it kind of mixes it up a little bit just from catching the ball and playing defense. So it's it's a fun little twist for sure. Not a lot of players can say they are first team all state and uh, wide receiver and and punting. So or two different positions like that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, you know, you, we've talked about your dad, uh, Ken Clark, and and what he did here. What does that mean to you to be able to be a legacy to come here and and to play where he played and wear the same uniform that he wore? Oh, uh, it means a lot. And I, I think we got we got a few. We got a we got a bunch of legacy players yeah. in the. 24 so it means a lot and I know it'll mean a lot for all of us just to be able to play together and I know a lot of us our dads actually played on the same team at the same time so um you know it, it's gonna be a lot and I think that'll be a good binding factor a little team bonding thing um but it, it just means a lot to be able to carry on his legacy at the school and kind of do some of the same things he did what do you think he would have said when you committed to Nebraska um, I think kind of like my grandma, he would have, he would have kind of set me straight. He, he would, he wouldn't have been so nice about it, but, um, <laughs> he would, he would have been like, I don't know what you're doing. You're a knucklehead or something like that. <laughs> but, um, he, he definitely would have been proud of me. And he, I mean, he'd just say, get back to work. Honestly, he'd be like, don't let it go to your head for sure. I love it. Coach McGuire was at your house recently. How's that been developing the, the relationship with, with Garrett McGuire? Yeah, I love Coach G. He's, he's, a, he's a great guy. It's super easy to connect with him just from him being so young. And he already knows so much stuff about football. I, I love I think he has a great IQ. And, you know, I think we gonna have a good relationship throughout the years and in the wideout room. I read somewhere where you said, you know, one of the things that you liked about Nebraska is that you feel like they're going to help you be the best that you can be. Why do you feel that, that Nebraska can help you be the best that you can be? 
Um, there's a couple of reasons. I think Coach Rule, I think the way he recruits and the way he coaches is amazing. Um, you know, he doesn't just go fishing for the portal for everybody he needs. He recruits out of high school, so he knows he can develop those high school players and, you know, make them to who they want to be and who he wants them to be um, and make them into game uh, game changers, you know what I mean? So I think Coach Rule has a lot to do with that, and I think that coaching staff and all the players buy into that, and, you know, that's that's why I think that Nebraska is a place where I can succeed. Great perspective. All right, so so you're a big track star too, but uh, what goes into these next few months for you to be ready and, and to be able to come here in the summer and, and take care of business and, and do what's needed for you when you get here? I'm um, just, continue, just continuing to work hard, you know, just being in the weight room and, you know, getting out and like sprinting once once or twice a week, just keeping up my speed, keeping um, my weight and, uh, you know, just keep working hard really. it's, it's I, I'll do track in the spring, you know, I'm just lifting right now and, I'll go to the field every once in a while, but pretty soon there's going to be three feet of snow on the ground. So <laughs> that, that's going to go out the window. But, you know, just working hard and, you know, just staying focused on what's ahead of me. All right. I got some fun questions to ask you. Let Husker fans get to know you a little bit more. Uh, who was your favorite player or athlete in any sport growing up? <sighs> that's tough. I want to say, like, um, I like Randy Moss and I like uh, Odell because I, I know when I was in, like, third grade or something he made a crazy he made the crazy catch and we were all doing that in recess and so I like Odell but I also like Randy Moss and then like currently it's probably like T Higgins or something just because we're similarly like the same height and we play the same position so um but for like basketball like I like um LeBron golf Tiger Woods I like to golf a lot um Tiger's my guy um so yeah oh so a golfer too yeah, I, I golf probably twice, twice, twice a uh, week in the summer with my friends. So nice. So you'll be able to to join. There's a big golfing group of of players that go golfing a lot here uh, throughout the summer. You'll be able to join that group. So this might be the answer to the next question. Then, what's your favorite hobby outside of football? Definitely, just uh, golf. I like golf a lot. It's very frustrating sometimes though, because <laughs> you have the best day of life or you have the worst day of your life, and you just want to break all your clubs. You know what I mean? But Phil, yeah. Um, Phil, yeah, yeah, definitely uh, hobbies, just being outside. Like my life has always been sports. There's not really a time where I'm not doing something that involves running or jumping or anything like that. But, you know, golf is a nice way to calm down. So I would say golf is like basically one of my hobbies in the summer. Oh, that's awesome. Favorite cereal. Ooh, ah, that's tough. I like Fruit Loops, uh, Fruit Loops. I used to like Lucky Charms, but they're a little too, too much sugar for me now. <laughs> So Fruit Loops, Fruit Loops are definitely one of mine. Definitely, yeah, it's just Fruit Loops. Oh, Frosted Flakes, Frosted Flakes. I like Frosted Flakes more than Fruit Loops. That's what it is. Okay, I think you're the first guy to say Fruit Loops, so so uh, like that. And um, Spotify Wrapped. Are you a Spotify guy? Who's your number one yeah. artist on Spotify? Drake, Drake for sure. Drake, <laughs> probably followed up by like some Rihanna, and then probably like uh, like some Uzi or some Playboy Cardi. Okay, last question for you. I want you to rank these cookie flavors, all right? So I got four and rank them. Fourth being the worst, one being the best, okay? Chocolate chip, peanut butter, macadamia nut, and oatmeal raisin. All right, macadamia nut is last, first <laughs> of all. Oatmeal raisin is third. I like oatmeal raisin, don't get me wrong, but chocolate chip is first, and second is going to be peanut butter. Because uh, chocolate chip, that basic cookie, is like it, it's the, you can't go wrong with it. Oh, I love it, I love it. Quinn Clark, appreciate your time. Great stuff. And um, can't wait to see you here come this summer. And uh, best luck in the track season. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. And that is Quinn Clark, the wide receiver out of Montana. Appreciate your time. Uh he was great. He was oh, my gosh. so fun to talk to. It, it, this is an impressive group. You know, all these guys that I've been able to chat with, I've been blown away. They've been fun. They've got some great personalities. And uh, I think they're going to be uh, some fan favorites, some of these guys. He kind of lights the room up, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He talks. Yeah. Fun stuff there. Grad congratulations to Quinn. Great to have him on board. All right, we're ready for another one. We talked with Coach about South Florida being kind of an area where they hit that particular area this recruiting season. And we've got some names from down there that now are officially Cornhuskers. We'll start with Willis McGahee from Miami, terrific linebacker, Christopher Columbus High School. 
And this is a young guy that has been committed for quite a while for the Cornhuskers and did never he never wavered with all those schools down there in that part of the country. He stayed a Husker the whole way through. One of the top recruits in the in the state of Florida and his numbers, wow. 15 seven tackles, 57 tackles, 16 sacks, nine tackles for loss. He had uh, four fumble recoveries, three pass breakups, three defensive touchdowns, 19 quarterback hurries, his junior year stats as well, 15 total tackles. 14 tackles for loss, eight sacks, uh, won a state title. So, yeah, this is a, a big get. And let's hear from uh, linebackers coach Rob Dvorak for the first time today. Husker linebackers coach Rob Dvorak with us. We have another linebacker to talk about. And, boy, the name McGahee should resonate with everybody that loves college football. Willis McGahee is going to be a Cornhusker, another young man from Miami. What a great bloodline. His dad was a terrific football player, and Willis, I think, is as well. Yeah, he, he's a tremendous football player. He's a great athlete as well. Another guy from, from Miami area. Uh, just a, I smile when I watch his tape because he's just an unbelievable kid. Um, great personality, competitor, tough, uh, physical. Uh, the sky's the limit for him. Um, you know, we're, we're excited about his skill set. He has ability to rush off the edge. Um, do a lot of different things. He, he is a tremendous football player and even better person. So I'm, I'm really excited about Willis. Scored three defensive touchdowns this past year, committed back in the late spring and never wavered. You gotta love that, that once he decided to be a Cornhusker, he was gonna be a Cornhusker. Yeah, he, he's been with us for a long time. Uh, he came up in the spring. Again, another guy that, that came up early. Uh, a guy that you know, a lot of guys on our staff had a great relationship with, and um, we just continued to try to build connections with him. And uh, he is—he's uh, a special talent. I'm—I'm I'm looking forward to the future with him. So another linebacker added to the Huskers, Willis McGahey from the state of Florida. Well, we mentioned we had a little run of Bell West players. I think we're now into a, a run from the state of Florida and Miami. Nebraska, with a late visit, gets a flip from Vincent Shavers, had been committed to the Hurricanes, now a Cornhusker, another linebacker that Nebraska's added to this thing. This was a guy that's a four-star prospect, according to Rivals, and this is a really nice get. And we talked with Coach about having Coop is from Miami, so he's got connections down there. There's some other people on the staff that really know high school football in that Miami area. And Shavers is now another Cornhusker. Man, this is a get, this is exciting, getting some guys from that part of the country. It's a recruiting hotbed, right? Florida. I mean, Texas and Florida are two of the, the best states to get high school talent. But I love what uh, Vincent's dad had to say that when they came to the visit uh, over the weekend. He, he put out on his on X on his profile. I like to thank Coach Rule and his amazing staff for the hospitality they showed me and my family on the OV. It was beyond more than I expected. The wait is over. Let's go Big Red. That's another thing we're seeing and hearing from the signees is you know the family feel which coach rule talked about but these are guys that seem really close with their family and so it's not just about the players coming in and it feeling like family but also those those families of these signees coming in and, and feeling that family feel as well it's certainly been important to the guys that I've talked to over uh, the last week so uh, let's hear from Rob Dvorak again on uh, Shavers Another addition to the Husker linebacker room. Linebackers coach Rob Dvorak rejoins us. Vincent Schaefer's from Miami Central, six foot, two hundred and five pounder. Excited about this young man. I know you are as well. Yeah, yeah. Vincent is a, a great young man. Uh, had the opportunity to to see him and and watch him run around. He is he is explosive, um, violent at the point of attack. A young man that loves the game of football. When you watch the tape, you could see him flash all over the tape. He'll you know he'll. He'll blitz inside, he'll blitz off the edge, you'll see him in coverage. Um, just violent at the point of attack, really good athlete. Um, really excited about him. He, he's, a, he's a football junkie himself and he has a lot of tools that we, we could do a lot with. Pretty good haul in this class from guys from South Florida, Vincent being another one of that group. And I think that might help having a couple guys that kind of from the same area join a team. Without a doubt. We got a couple guys from, from Miami area, South Florida. Um, that, you know, that helps when you get those guys on the team, you know, there's connections there. Um, so it, it's good. It's good to have that. And uh, they're, they're different athletes down there. So we're excited about those guys. Vincent Schaefer's from Miami Central, a linebacker, a little over 200 pounds, but you can see really explosive. The newest addition to Nebraska's linebackers room. 
So Vincent, Miami Central High School, we're going to stay as we continue our roll through South Florida with another flip. And these are the young guys who were here last weekend. So this tells you how much up to the end of the line the staff pushed it to get guys into this class. We are proud to announce Larry Tarver is now a Cornhusker at DB from that area, Miami Norland High School for Larry Tarver. And he had been committed to another school in the Big Ten Conference. So you take one away from a fellow Big Ten team and a four-star prospect according to rivals. So Tarver in as an N. Yeah, to get another guy that had a pretty impressive list of schools uh, offers, including Miami. And, you know, I always think it's big when you can go in and we've talked about Colorado and now Miami, the area for Miami. And a lot of these kids, kind of like the Nebraska kids, grow up dreaming of playing for those schools. And so for Nebraska to be able to, to go out and, and steal a few of these guys and, and make them feel at home, uh, certainly huge as well. But uh, let's hear from Evan Cooper on Tarver. Joined by Husker defensive backs coach Evan Cooper. The next commitment for that room is from Miami. That's a great place to be. Larry Tarver has committed to the Cornhuskers 5'11", 160 pound corner. Tell us about him. Man, really productive from a good program. Uh, they played in the state championship. I think over the last two years, he's had 12, 12 or so interceptions. He's a really, really productive player. Um, also ran track, you know, so uh, I'm excited about him. You know, he, he can play, he can play football. So we like that. Anytime we can go to Miami and get a guy, it's always a good thing. Bit of a late find, came here late in the recruiting process, but sometimes those are the guys that are kind of the diamonds in the rough, ready to grab them, and you guys did. Yeah, yeah, so he, uh, he had been committed to another Big Ten program, uh, and it's a good job by uh, Philip Simpson, you know, one of our guys is from Miami, finding this guy, and uh, we've been recruiting him, really. Um, this is a good find for us. He, like I said, he's productive, he's fast, he's athletic, good hips, all of that. When do you expect him to be here? Will he be a January? Yeah, yeah, he'll be a mid-year enrollee. So he'll, get, he'll come and get indoctrinated, indoctrinated to the culture and the style of play. And let's see what he can do. Larry Tarver, newest addition of the Husker defensive backroom young man from Miami, Florida. Well, there's kind of our run of South Florida. That was exciting, right? Three in a row from, from down in that part of the country. And I know with, with Coop, particularly being from that area, he was a big help in landing some of these. We're not done. We're going to stay in the East Coast, move up the coastline a little bit into the state of North Carolina and tell you that Evan Taylor is now a Cornhusker, a DB 6'2", 175. He had just a tough senior year, had some injury situations. But Nebraska didn't waver. They say, no, that's okay. You, you, injuries are part of football. We understand that. I know he appreciates that. And he has now signed his national letter of intent with the Big Red. Another one of those guys at the athleticism uh, jumps off, off, off the film, played both sides of the football, wide receiver and cornerback. So, again, a playmaker on both sides of the ball. And I love that. I love that. You hear that throughout the years about some of the guys that have injured in high school and, and maybe certain schools have backed off. But I just, again, it speaks to this coaching staff that they want to stick with the guys that they believe in. And uh, certainly I know that it will mean a lot to him. But uh, let's, let's hear from Evan Cooper again on Evan Taylor. Joined now by Husker defensive backs coach Evan Cooper, another Evan Evan Taylor, another member of this Husker class. You went to North Carolina to find him. You talked about length with some of these guys. He's long, 6'3". Yeah, he's long. He's long. He's athletic. Uh, when you get long guys, they kind of shrink the field a little bit. Uh, he's, he kind of settled in the corner uh, the last two years. Uh, he's, he plays both ways, so you get to see some of his traits on the offensive side of the ball. Um, I actually got a chance to see him live, and he was a treat to watch. He's, like I said, he's really like a long, long player. Long, plays long, he's fast, athletic, explosive. Uh, I'm excited about his, where, he at, where he's at. We saw him jump the route there to make a play. He's had, he had injuries during his senior year, and he was really appreciative of the fact that Nebraska didn't waver on your commitment to me. He committed back in June here to Nebraska. Yeah, yeah, he's a guy that I was really excited about getting his commitment. Um, I'm still excited about him and him showing up here soon and uh, just getting after it, seeing what he could do. 6'3", 175 from Cuthbertson High School in North Carolina, and you see him more as a safety or corner, or do you think you'll train him at both? You know, when I watched him, he was a corner, and uh, he can move around like a corner. He, he's uh, he's got really good body balance, good feet, really quick twitch. So uh, his size, he'll look like a safety at some point, but I think you know we'll try him at corner. Evan Taylor, 
newest addition to the Husker defensive backroom. Evan Tater, new a member to the Nebraska team, and Evan Tater again got hurt week one in high school senior year. That's crushing. That I, that breaks my heart when kids get hurt early in their final season of playing some high school football. But he'll be a Husker, and I know he appreciates the fact that Nebraska did not turn and run and when he got hurt because some programs do that. That is not happening here, and I think that's a big thing. That's another good compliment about this coaching staff. Well, we ha we've covered a lot of different areas of this football team the last couple hours, and, and we appreciate the folks at Husker Vision kind of extending our stay. We were supposed to wrap up around 10. We weren't done. We were still getting names coming in, and we got one more before we're going to wrap this up because we do have a press conference in about an hour. Coach Rule will talk uh, on these uh, YouTube streams in about an hour, but a kicker. Nico Ottomanelli from New Jersey is going to be a Cornhusker. So Nico Ottomanelli, who is from Northern Valley Old Tappan High School, is going to be a Cornhusker. So Nico Ottomanelli, terrific punter, is going to be also a place kicker. He can do a lot of different things. Had a terrific uh, senior campaign uh, back there. Made six of eight field goals. Made all of his extra points. Handled kickoff duties, punting duties. He's coming to Nebraska to help kind of bolster and give some competition in the kicking room for Nebraska moving forward. Yeah, again, build some depth back there, right? Uh, got a couple of specialists coming in that it's always great to have uh, options there to have that competition throughout the spring and fall camp. But how about let's hear from Ed Foley for the first time. Joined by special teams coordinator Ed Foley, the Oscars have another kicker in the fold, Nico Ottomanelli, a young guy from Jersey. Kind of like those Jersey guys, right? I, I do. He's right from my neighborhood, um, you know, where I lived and where I was, where I raised a couple of my kids. Not where I'm from, but uh, North Jersey, Bergen County, um, big leg. Came to camp uh, this year, did a great job at camp. Really accurate guy with great range. Made a 50-yarder, made a 48-yarder uh, in games. Has the school record at Northern Valley Old Tapan for uh, longest field goal. Um, real excited about this guy. Only missed three field goals in his career. And he can punt, right? He can also he can do a couple different things. Yeah, he's a long kid, too. So he's he's big. He's got he's got a big leg. Uh, he can kick off. Uh, he can kick. He's, he's, he's got great accuracy on the field goals. Uh, and he can punt. He's very versatile. Love those kind of guys. Nico Ottomanelli, the latest Husker kicker added to the fold. Maybe some more names name, 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 name. throughout the uh, rest of the day. This is a full day of signing, so some, particularly if you're like out maybe, oh, well, should I say Hawaii? Maybe out there, you're not even awake yet out there. So uh, continue to monitor Huskers.com for some updates and, and all of our social media platforms to go through that. Here's where we stand right now. We can put up the list of all the ones that have been announced so far this morning. My count, I might be off one or two, but I've got 26 scholarship athletes have been announced up at this point in time uh, during the year. Coach Rural will meet with the media again at 1130. That will be uh, pushed out on all of our social platforms as well. Pretty exciting day for Husker football. Yeah, and again, you just look at the list. So impressive. But across the the country really got some really big gets, but locking in the, the state of Nebraska, the, the recruits from Texas and Florida, the ones that we've talked about so far, you got the number one recruit out of Georgia, number one recruit out of Montana, number one recruit out of Iowa, number one recruit out of Nebraska. And as you mentioned, maybe waiting on one more, the, the player of the year out of the state of Missouri. And again, just being able to chat with a few of these guys, just great, great human beings and, and excited to be a part of this program, the legacies, the you know the the multi-sport athletes, just the things that we've heard this coaching staff talk about. I mentioned this at the top of the show, but a year ago we were sitting here doing these signing day interviews, and they had talked about some of those things, and it's coming to fruition here in their their first year-long recruiting class here at Nebraska. But I'm excited about this class. It's a really important class, I know, to the staff, and I know they've got a lot of guys that they're really excited about. Yeah, you saw the map there of all the places that have been hit so far. Again, that day's not over. There's still some more things to go but our and walk-ons that we'll, we'll hear that are, are really going to be really really important to the staff as well and we'll hear much more about them throughout the day and as you well. heard coach talk about it he doesn't differentiate between the yeah. two but some of those will start making their way out on our social platforms throughout the day i want to thank you for being a part of this i want to thank husker vision crew did a great yeah. job compiling all the videos doing all the work behind the scenes to make this work we hope you enjoyed our coverage uh, we'll step aside for about an hour and then the coach will have his press conference at 11:30 to kind of put his final thoughts on uh, the day and and the, the recruiting season for nebraska football
What a day! I'm what excited. What a day! And uh, you know, shout out to the the football digital crew. You you did some work with it too. But I thought it was awesome. The video game, yeah. C.J. Campbell and uh, Jordan Litton and, and that crew, and and they did a great job. And yeah, Husker Vision. They've been here all morning, and uh, they were doing a lot of work over the last couple of days. So the, a lot of work goes into this. It's a big day. It's an important day for these signees. It's it's important for the future. So it's been a great day, and uh, it's been fun. Fantastic. Good stuff. Good work, everybody. Enjoy your holiday season. Husker football. An exciting time to be a Nebraska Cornhusker. Enjoy the rest of your day.